welcome to Pale Reflections, a proud member of the Doof Network, where we reflected on Wild Boy's most reflected work as it really. I'm Kipos. And I'm Vice Versailles. After putting this show on ourselves for three years for our final reflecting episode, we thought we'd finally cave and invite guests. So for this special feminist episode of Pale Reflections, we've invited a pair of lovely ladies to join us. Hello! <laughs> I'm Malia. And (laughs) damn it. I fucked it up already, guys. (laughs) Um, Okay, fine. Uh, I'm Jenny, and uh, Malia is here. I'm here. We're so excited to be on this podcast with y'all. Yeah, thanks for having us. And last time. Yeah, Uh, exactly. It's been great listening uh, to y'all, and uh, this is great. Yeah, we've Pretty been fans. working pretty hard three years nonstop yeah. every week. So, so many I'm proud of summaries. us for getting this. Yeah, it's been a lot of chapter summaries. <sighs> yeah, we're excited. To, I mean, it's kind of it doesn't feel real that it's done. Uh, mm. Yeah, no, it doesn't. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm sure I'm not alone in freaking out and crying at the last chapter. Um, because mm. yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, it's been a lot. Um, it has. I yeah. was a whole other human being when uh, Pale started, and like it, it has uh, really been a fixture of like the last few years for me. Um, so it's you know been a real honor to follow along, um, and uh, like oh, I I feel like these epilogues end up being a, a really sweet um, uh, send off for these characters that they should be. Um, but also, like on for like people in the community that have followed along with, uh, live, um, also a really great way to say goodbye to that time period and um, that special energy. Yeah, yeah. You saying that you're a different person? Like, yeah, I created a human. <laughs> there is a whole new person released <laughs> that is younger energy. than Pale. <laughs> in this world <laughs> and that's just really funny to think about it like that. crazy how pale is jenny jr's <laughs> older sibling <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy yeah fuck that's yeah. pretty wild yeah uh but it's kind of cool that the canateers also have like caught up to us like mm. we were moving so much faster than they were um but we get to see them like i guess a little bit in the future from now yeah. technically but we get to see them as their new three year, three years later selves. Yeah, man. Yeah, the first chapter was posted on the fifth of May, twenty twenty, and I mean, and things changed abruptly afterward. <laughs> yeah. Yes, things <laughs> like we were. Well, I, I guess I didn't actually have to worry about uh, working from home personally, but I think most people were glad to have something extra to uh, to to do or some extra mm-hmm. reading material um while at home mm-hmm. uh after um let's let's see after alexander uh bristow's aware um the wild hunt and uh musser and of course charles uh i feel like they've been through about as much as a global pandemic <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so yeah. the, it actually Very sort slow. of evened out <laughs> <laughs> leaving leaving the pandemic out of the narrative was the right move because <laughs> drama wise, roughly equal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's like Verona was telling Clem a while ago, is that like when energies are imbalanced from where they should be, you know, things are pushed in to step it up. So because there wasn't mm. a global pandemic in the other verse, instead mm. <laughs> we get pale. Which is honestly <laughs> yes, exactly, a pretty good exactly. <laughs> been a weird fucking past few mm-hmm. yeah but uh i'm I, I it's kind of i know it's unreasonable because you have to stop and or you have to like stop writing sometime i understand mm-hmm. there has to be I still feel like i could just yeah ever yeah that yeah that's something i've definitely been feeling as we go through these epilogues that like there is that joy in like having a story be finished and it was a beautiful ending and like i loved every part of it but at the same time <laughs> It's like, this has been such a fixture of my life the last couple of years. And it's like, there's a lot of sadness in, you know, letting it go. And yeah, there was a large part of me that was like, oh, he could have just written another couple of arcs, surely, you know, like, (laughs) come on, love. Oh my gosh. Aren't you all glad that like, he didn't stop earlier at least? Can you imagine if there were only like three 
uh-huh. of Ox or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think it was five to six Ox was the original plan. Yeah, I I can say that I'm very, very glad that he didn't stop after five or six. Yeah. I know this I is know a how lot long... of people's favorite uh, Wild Boy book. It's my second favorite. It's absolutely my favorite. I, I'd say it's my favorite as well. But I mean, that's like picking a favorite dessert mm. for me, at least. I mean, you're not going to go wrong. They're all good. Yeah, they're all yeah. good. They're all yeah. fantastic. Yes. Uh, you know, I like to say like Worm is my least favorite Wild Boy book. And it's like one of my top 10 books. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. yeah. So, well, I mean, yeah. Chocolate pretty... is okay, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that, yeah, exactly. I know three people in my life who don't like chocolate. Mm. And it's a lot. It's too many. It's a lot of people. I can only think of two. And one of them is the same. It's, one of them is our cousin who mm-hmm. just bless, bless him. Bless his heart. <laughs> the fact love... that the trio all had such different just tastes in food continuously messed with me. <laughs> Especially when Avery started to bring in her lost foods and Verona was like, coffee and basil, sign me up. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, uh, yeah, Verona has just got very different tastes than I have, I think, food-wise. Well, the lost foods, I do have to say, were joy. Like, mm-hmm. that was one of those things where you look at it and you're like, that's fucking disgusting. I love it. <laughs> yeah like yes it's one of the, it's one of those small things that comes up and you're just like i don't ever want to try this but i love that it exists in wild boy's mind mm. Mm. but that's the pale you know there's something in there for everybody even yeah. if that thing is coffee and basil that's true <laughs> which if that's it? all you get out of pale i might might judge you a little bit <laughs> just, but, just a little, well, it's just just a little like, bit it would but, be wild if you read uh, i don't know millions of words or however long the story is and then finally you get to coffee and basil and you're like yes like <laughs> it's uh, all finally. worth it <laughs> no reason for me to... this, this is what i've been searching for <laughs> was approximately with uh extra materials and all that the story is mm. about 3.8 million mm, mm. shout out to fail x's sheet which is updated up to 8.3 mm. three more epilogues in there so about yeah 3.8 million words that's fucking crazy that's a lot. Now that it's now that it's done, though, more people that I've been recommending it to for years now are actually picking it up because they're like, hey. "Oh, only three point eight million! It stopped finally." Like the, the, <laughs> they had this attitude of like, "It's three point three and it's still going." Was the general mood? Mm-hmm. Um, so like, I, I've, I'm rounding up my the 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 holdouts are finally breaking, and it's it's a real relief because I have so much to say to so many people about so many things and finally those conversations get to happen yes yeah Um, i definitely i definitely feel that um we've just had some new housemates move into our house and you know i think it was day two or something where i was like hey you guys should really read pale by the way it's so good (laughs) (laughs) so So good the first few days were you holding yourself back (laughs) oh i was trying i was struggling to hold back for those couple of days and then it was like you know what fuck it yeah like, we'll see. We'll start. They signed the lease. They They're signed here. the lease. They're in. They come back out now. Time to start annoying them about pale. <laughs> I find it so fascinating how people are afraid of long word counts. Like, I, I kind of get it, but also, like, you can stop whenever you want, and it's free, and it's really good, and there's a lot of it. It's just like, yay. <laughs> like, yeah. It's a free. You know, it's not like you're paying for per the word to read the story. <laughs> that would yeah. be like it's it's scary. daunting a little bit, like looking at it and saying like, oh god, three point eight million words. That's like twenty novels or something like that. But then, like when you love like every one of those words, then it's not you know, yeah, it, it's it's no hardship. It's amazing. So mm. it's like going to an all you can eat buffet and being and complaining about like the amount of food. Like you don't have to, you're not supposed <laughs> you don't to eat have it all. to eat all of it. If like you I mean. Should've... That's kind of. <laughs> you know? I want to meet someone who's only read like the even arcs of Pale or something. Oh, just I like, don't want to meet one of those people. I go. You know, it's like the person who like oh my doesn't goodness. want the salad. Yeah. <laughs> oh I, my gosh! A, f- a friend of mine had gotten to arc seven without reading any extra materials. Um, oh, and bless the them. first chapters that I read for the audiobook were extra materials. So they'd specifically skipped the ones that I recorded. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was so hurt. 
That's oh, cool. yeah. I'd be so ticked. <laughs> I'd be so mad. Okay. Um, we better t- talk about, um, though, um, all packed up too. It is happening. <laughs> it's happening. Because, well, Indeed. All paled up, all packed up. It's, it's all, all packed up too, all paled up. Beyond the pale. Uh, actually, it's all packed to, up to colon, all paled up, hyphen, beyond the pale. You have to. Yeah. Right. Really the punctuation's have... important. Yeah, it is very important, mm. and it is happening next weekend, which is really soon. Yeah, I don't it's know how really to do soon. dates with yeah, the whole. Yeah, some guys like, called Ruben and Elliot are hosting it. I'm yeah, I haven't met them or I mean, but I, I, you know, they seem really confident. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're they're like they're going in. They're I mean they're they're willing to stay up for a, a really long time. So mm-hmm. that was the main requirement good for right. them they're yeah. ostensibly willing to do things that we're not <laughs> <Most people. laughs> that's, yeah. my that's pretty yeah, much yeah read the fanfics that i recommended to them <laughs> 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 that's that's the real onus that's gonna be hard <laughs> yeah right so yeah um, you can find out a little more about apu2 on doofmedia.com slash apu2 to the yes. new and it should be a good time and i will say they are willing to do some crazy stuff for charity Oh, so yeah. if you want to donate your money and watch them kind of torture themselves <laughs> in different mm-hmm. ways, like uh, <laughs> anybody that's seen all packed up will know some of the crazy yeah. shit that they were willing to do then. Um, yeah. I think like, milk is on the menu. I don't the, think the oh, baby food Lord, milk. I hope not. Beef yeah. I think is he, on the menu? it's that he bet Elliot bet spoonfuls of milk. If he's wrong about his hundred years Pisces. lost. Yeah. Oh, okay. Things. That that does Ruben feel like is, a yeah. a path punishment of like <laughs> make, make sure not to speak to the wolf in even numbered sentences because <laughs> oh golly then you'll be forced to eat brilk and become lost. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Ruben You're was smarter, and I think lost. Ruben has said no brilk this time to him. So <laughs> yeah, I that's mean... because he didn't lose his brain cells by eating the brilk last time, where Elliot <laughs> apparently has forgotten about the traumatic experience and listen it's an acquired taste okay (laughs) oh gosh some people don't like chocolate some people don't like brilk you know there's things for everybody (laughs) how do you get how do you acquire that taste that's what i want to know like like... by doing apu2 that's how you acquire the taste i mean he does he, he does not have a very good sense of smell so I've talked Elliot, to him about so true. like maybe he can tolerate the taste of brilk. Listen, like, I eat brilk for the texture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honestly, I'm so proud of them for not immediately throwing it off. Can you describe the texture? <laughs> moist. <Yeah. laughs> Uh, okay, okay. There are, how about you eat something like cake like that's moist? Okay. There are things that are moist that are not like disgusting as fuck. Mm. Right? But like soggy moist, not just moist moist. Because mm. like the milk permeates it. Trace Lich's cake is it's like kind of more... like, <laughs> you guys need kind to of like chewing it. taro. What really? <laughs> <laughs> See, I imagine that it's like like cereal, sort of, but bad, like <laughs> really mushy, gross like, cereal. But it does have like in the bowl, those little and it's like you touch it mm. and Hard bits. Okay, okay. So for the, what I'm hearing is that for the live stream, we need to ask for a full mouthfeel flavor <laughs> yes, rating 100%. of like, brilk, if he's gonna... Yes. So that we can know for the oh. future. You know what? They should actually just like this is a this is a bad idea to be saying this on a recording, but we should just like Sorry. why stop at brilk? He needs to do a comparison of certain mm. other disgusting coffee things. and basil. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean that's gonna be. Like um, I mean, that's going to be ten out of ten. Of course, that's going to be the highest of course, one. Of <laughs> Brilk's yeah, yeah. going to be anyone the taste. If if Brilk's if Brilk's not the lowest, what's going to be the lowest? <laughs> like that's what I want to know. You need to have some things. There have been some horrible rate. foods mentioned in. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, still that's think true, but like, is the worst. But for for I'm those sure listening, you should you should read Pate, which is Wild Bo's um, cuisine work. Uh, short story yeah. of a uh, food review. See, um, I would in the other words, pate, like, I would eat everything in pate. Yeah. That yeah, that is literally. the buffet for me. <laughs> yes, I mean, I. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it might take it take me a while to mentally be able to have that first bite, but right? I would do it because it would be amazing. But um, yeah, if y'all were listening, um, and Malia and I did the episode, um, if I can, if I recall correctly, the pickup line I said oh. and came up with. Uh, from pet 
Five stars. Delicious. Thank, yeah. thank you. Five stars. Which I guess also could be a pickup line. Five stars. No, not a five delicious, stars, good one. Okay, <laughs> actually, so, I don't. You know what? I'm not going to yes on that one because <laughs> my brain went one way, and I don't want to go that way. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, that, that's all I'll say about that. Although I will say, um, so my daughter, who is two, um, Pale's she, younger sister. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yes, Pale's younger sister, <laughs> Pale Junior. Um, mm. she just learned um how to say delicious, and she's been saying it for everything but so like she tried some nesquik powder i sent malia this a video and she just kept like trying it being like mm, delicious <laughs> very like very, so cute. very emphatic adorable. very forceful and very enthusiastic mm. it. yeah yes. it's very cute um that's so cute <laughs> uh anyway that's yeah a, that should is we not... start yeah. talking breaking down these chapters let's do yeah. it let's do our summary Okay. <clears throat> in E.1, um, three hours after their triumphant victory over Charles, um, Lucy, Verona, and Avery rest and recuperate on a path, performing first aid on their bodies. Avery then heads home to her family and gets some first aid for her soul with a call to Nora. Verona starts rebuilding work on her domain and works out a rough deal with her mom in how they're going to act toward each other going forward and she starts planning her ritual for Kenneth below i like um, this chapter yeah the um i i had al- I'd almost forgotten by the end of the epilogues about the path that they visit to recuperate with its that like so cool. swimming constellations that like mm-hmm. sweep down from the sky and like it like if there was if there was going to just be a promenade sequel to pale just like a quick like little three chapter of just the same promenade treatment for avery solving that i want i would love to read about this That's again cool. it's such a yes. brilliant vision also you I have swear, to feel bad for like... that dude that got sent home backwards <laughs> like that's hell like <laughs> i know i mean in terms of like bad outcomes that's pretty tame it's but better than being lost suck but it's yeah. worse than... Very inconvenient. Yeah, worse than normal. <laughs> it's something you would be very annoyed for for the rest of your life, I think, unless they found a way to fix it. Which maybe your brain f- would, f- like, flip eventually. That's or true. Or whatever. Maybe you could mm-hmm. just, like, go and c- carry a mirror around, and maybe that I just would... Feel like, <laughs> carrying a mirror around everywhere would just be so inconvenient. Just like, oh, yeah. uh, like, uh, reading everything backwards. That's uh, true. <laughs> different types. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just... have it on a necklace or something yeah you could just like flip up like a makeup mirror and then like hold a book it's like beside your head so you can be like more reading the mirror than you're reading the book Mm, um but then you've just got to like tilt the mirror like as you read i don't know i feel like i I, I feel like that's a little bit easier to adapt to (laughs) because at least you don't have to like rewire your brain but that's um, true true. your brain's been (laughs) hella rewired (laughs) at this point already (laughs) your brain's been kind of (laughs) jacked with uh, I, yeah, but I know like the these paths and things that Wildbo comes up with. I feel like most people to come up with that would need to do some kind of drugs. Mm. But he just like comes up with it. I wonder, yeah, if it's just like he picks three random words out of some sort of like random word generator and it's like cool. Or if it's, you know, <laughs> hmm. if he thinks of puns, I bet that's one of them for like cakewalk and stuff. He's like, it'd be so funny if... There was a path named the cakewalk that was really not a cakewalk. Really fucking hard. Right. Mm-hmm. And like, what could that possibly be? I don't know. It's just, they're great. Uh, I'm not unconvinced that he just visits them and then writes down what he sees <laughs> and then comes back. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He's just I writing about it. his experiences as a path walker. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the main antagonist of the story was called Charles. For the first segment, we had John. I'm just saying. It's true. <laughs> The villain uh, of the author endures in every one of their works. <laughs> um, but reflecting on this chapter, I realized this is our last. Um, this is the last time we see Jude in the story. Um, best mm-hmm. boy. Um, he's so good. And now I'm like, yeah. Where? Where? What happens to you, Jude? You're so good. I. You know. He put up with so much. <laughs> he put up with so much. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's just like i'm just gonna go back to the u.s and it's fine <laughs> yeah 
I, I have to believe that he's still like friendly with Avery and Avery will every mm-hmm. now and then pop in and be like, hey, I need a favor. And he'll be like, mm-hmm. oh God, what now? <laughs> The magic school bus, except it's just Avery showing up on Jude's day to day. <laughs> yeah. With the Kelly? No way. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh. For um, epilogue two, um, three days later, uh, Lucy takes a trip to Kennet Below and uh, learns about the supply issues due to a lack of fuzziness. Um, she deals with the leftover Kennet Below school uh, before returning to the shittier version of school in Kennet Above fending off ceaseless questions from the aware kids and running into shitty teachers. We see that all three Kenneteers are pushing themselves hard still, and that Jasmine is on the edge of losing her fucking mind. <laughs> Lucy barely manages to hold together before finally having the conversation with Jasmine. She offers a compromise that Lucy rejects, uh, and Grandfather pushes an ultimatum. Chill the fuck out, or delegate, or I'm leaving. Lucy compromises on the compromise. <laughs> This chapter was so fucking rough. Like, oh my god. Oh my gosh. It's like And so anticipated for so long by the community. It was very satisfying getting to see yes. um this conversation. Finally, and, the, the confrontation. And so funny that up until the very end, Lucy was like, Grandfather is here as my security blanket, and he is on the <laughs> side. <laughs> well, he, he he's just doing it. Like he, well, he was on a level that she didn't recognize, he was yes. doing exactly what she expected him to. It's just that her own ability to understand what that would mean was so divorced mm. from reality at that point. Yeah, um, definitely. As the as those two characters grew closer, we did see a lot of grandfather does the thing that Lucy needs, and absolutely not the thing that Lucy wants. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like stopping her charging into a fight in the freezing rain and dying of hypothermia. Like, <laughs> When she's like, my brother is so good. He's so good. And Lucy is just like, she's so gung ho about getting in there. And mm. yeah, I just, I love that grandfather was really, yeah, just consistently there for Lucy. And I mean, that part made me cry as well because that was so emotionally intense, like mm-hmm. that confrontation. And fuck, when he like don't asks trust for people. the ring and the dog mm. tag, I was like, oh, mm. oh I oh, felt man. that in my soul when he, like, he, like, oh, he's going to take them back. And like, oh, horrible yeah. but like it's, it's amazing but it's like emotionally horrible <laughs> mm-hmm. i feel like yeah it's just this it res this uh epilogue resonated with me quite a bit because like i'm a lucy girl um mm, for sure same. anyway <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> uh i mean everyone else is great but like um absolutely <laughs> but um i just like really there's like her just having just feeling like she needs to keep going through everything is wearing herself down but feeling like she has to keep going and has to keep on like dealing with stuff like like she doesn't have an option to stop um i actually can really like heavily relate to that with just how my life's been going (laughs) for like the past year um but it's nice it was very I mean, I was so pissed off when she didn't take that compromise. I was like right there with really? Jasmine. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, wow. what is wrong with you? Like, take the compromise. Like, I would kill my, well, two-year-old and four-year-old <laughs> who would not be in that position. But I feel like I would kill them if they uh, were trying to get those killed that much, mm. you um. know? <laughs> I mean, I'm um, personally, I was right there with Lucy in that, like, you just can't take that compromise. Like, it's just, it's too damning for your own soul if you, like, watch things mm-hmm. happening next door, basically, and you know that you yeah. can help. Yeah. And then you have sworn to not help. Like, I think that would kill Lucy. <laughs> like, I, mm-hmm. yeah. I think the compromise was, it came from a very good place, but I think mm-hmm. it was a bad compromise. I really like the compromise on the compromise that they settled up. they they settled with Mm -hmm. where like basically she'll delegate and she will try not to like immediately rush forward like she will let other people go first but she's not going to sit out and not help if she needs to help Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no it was a big relief when grandfather finally like kind of talked some sense into her and was able to talk to jasmine about how like her oath that she wanted to swear to um was not the best have a lot of problematic things with it Mm. um definitely like came up with the best option but i yeah. when i first read it like and she acted like she was be like 
no, absolutely not. I'm not going to compromise or anything. Because just, at, I don't know, as like, I mean, again, my children are very young, but <laughs> it just, yeah. This this whole chapter, it's, I'm so glad that we finally got the Jasmine conversation for exactly that reason of like, there there's such something very genre about parents basically losing that most like fundamental expression of their their care for their kids in like narratives like these where Mm -hmm. suddenly they like oh yeah go on endanger yourself like like put your put your life in incredible peril it's not like that undermines like everything that i stand for and bringing you (laughs) into this world um and um the like allowing jasmine to like really set what like the like firmest form of her love for her daughter looks like um was fantastic the thing that was clicking in my brain was just grandfather in in this scene because here is this the perfect pattern manifestation of what lucy has gone through of like a father that literally can't die because Mm -hmm. all the other ones have um and like the repercussions of that have haunted her through her whole life before the story and up to now um with her like her biological father and then her stepdad and then um john and uh to extent uh, gill uh, and t- uh, to an extent toad swallow and um all of that um finally culminating in this grandfather who like volu- like steps into the story as a symbol of that like, he fits the niche by name and like lucy seeks him out after john's death almost because of it like she's just trying to fit him into that for him to then not just embrace the role but do it better Mm -hmm. than lucy could have expected to the point of really having her interests at heart regardless of what it is that like she asserts and like what fears are haunting her is like the perfect place to leave lucy as a character like like close out the arc for her that we've been following there with grandfather being actually characterized uh, perfectly and like obviously we have one more epilogue with lucy um but i i really felt that this was a culmination of that through line um and it was just so satisfying Mm -hmm. um that to see her finally get something that is truly good for her um and and really like if it doesn't like necessarily close that wound that has been repeatedly salted it does let it scar as something that she can live with um yeah and i just loved it yeah it was really great i did also love for grandfather that like this is one of the last times we see him talk like i think he has like <laughs> yeah. two lines in 8.6 and like that's it like mm-hmm. we see him like a bunch in um 804 and we see him a bit more in 8.6 as well and most of the time he's just at peace like he's just chilling he's happy to be a dog and to sleep and mm. you know yeah have some peace not have to be so war focused and yeah i just i love that like this conversation like we see with lucy really got through to lucy and mm-hmm. we see with grandfather really helped you know get him to the stage where he can just be at peace mm. which is so lovely. which is <laughs> like what john refused after yeah. embracing that hurry up and wait or be fighting like like ordained like how dogs of war are supposed to work after embracing that to the point of get, getting him killed the, it still hurts like, thinking the, about that scene where yeah mm-hmm. with the arena outside the arena um mm-hmm. in octane oh my fucking heart still yeah and grandfather says like you fucking idiot to john when he realizes that he's denied lucy and denied this opportunity and like in this chapter we get to see grandfather be like hey don't be like john like john is great yeah but don't be like John. You're doing the same yeah. thing. Just, like, I um, loved him, but the man was an idiot. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think yeah. I think we kind of all kind of feel that about him. Like, I think everyone loved John as a character, but at the end of the day, I don't think many people agreed with his decision at the end there. Oh, no. Um, because it was I- self-sacrificing, stupid, kind of macho shit. <laughs> mm. And yeah, like, it hurt a lot when it happened and like the repercussions of it have hurt all the way up until the epilogue. But yeah, at least we got characters like grandfather that will teach Lucy not to be a dickhead. Cause I don't know if John would have been able to do that. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I realize I missed my opportunity. I told y'all a great grandfather joke for this podcast. And this is the time I should have done it. You can do it now. I'm I'm going to do it. We'll pretend we didn't hear it. But okay. okay. You're just going to have to fake laugh again. (laughs) See if I say it just as good. All right, guys, get ready for like a great dad joke or grand granddad joke. Okay. So, um, <laughs> yeah, my grandfather, he just like, he just wasn't, he wasn't very good. Um, until I had my son and then he became a great grandfather. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. You guys, they laughed so much harder. They laughed so hard. They couldn't even stop. They it's were true. like rolling it's around. True. So, yeah. uh, this you know it might seem forced but that's just because they've heard it before and they got it all the laughter out of their system exactly mm. yeah that's very believable malia just rolled her eyes that was hilarious. <laughs> 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 okay all right fine okay anyway i so for the lucy stands here i'm, I'm curious as to whether you agree with this thought i have but oh, but damn. She, it, I, it's interesting that it seems like this huge moment for Lucy as a person comes in the epilogues. Um, like this seems to be the moment where Lucy, like, I don't know if let's go is the right phrase, but after this, she is silly. Like we see her actively be silly. We see her, um, yeah, like joke around and have fun in a way that I don't remember her being throughout the entire story. And we've heard mm-hmm. like about the little girl with like the pigtails or whatever um, that Jasmine remembered um, when she was younger. Like we've heard that Lucy's had this in her, but it like it was genuinely shocking to me when she like gets out her guitar and is like, yeah, little goblins, let's go. And yeah. I yeah. like we're going to get to the question of like, which Kenneth here is the best or whatever. And this is the first arc where I don't like, it's, it's not just a two way tie anymore. It's a three way tie. Yeah. Um, And like, because like Avery, her, one of her main flaws at the beginning of the story was she was like quiet to the point where it was a test of the universe. Um, And so like breaking out of that and like, you know, becoming the super cool Avery, um Mm -hmm. who makes all the friends and does all the stuff um and verona was like i don't want to be a person um because the world doesn't have a place for me and it sucks and she becomes someone who has created a space for her and like creates that space for other people um and lucy is the child of war but now like has peace and has Mm. fun um and i just like like i can't pinpoint the exact moment for the other two of when that like mm. healing and things happened but for lucy it seems like this is that moment mm. yeah i i would extend to that each of the trio get a moment where that really addresses that um like first principles problem that we see with them at the start of the story um because in epilogue one verona resolves to basically to grow up to like she has a vision of who she wants to become and she starts to like directly go like I'm, I'm not just like learning a bit of everything because i want to do a bit of everything and saying i'm a nascent sorceress because it's like the vibe it's like no i'm i'm going to become that level of incredible adult i'm going to like like it like, becomes a, a targeted ambition for her and avery who has been like found silence and big being still to be a matter of great discomfort where like, oh, I'm being ignored. I need to like, like reach out, connect to people right away because otherwise I'm going to be lost. That sort of attitude on um, a more psychological level than literal um, uh, for, for most of the story um, then becomes the um, scene that we'll see soon um, with uh, Avery and Nora simply like sp- spending time together, uh, together in silence, feeling like mm-hmm. she's, in this place of lostness, very found. Um, and the the thing that I appreciate most about Lucy's culminating moment, this one here, um, is that those two are examples of basically maturing, um, of like, like Verona becoming the, her vision of an adult when she was afraid of becoming like her parents. Um, Avery finding that relationship romantically that she desired, um, but... In, in a whole context that she couldn't have imagined. 
Um, for Lucy, she actually, because she had to grow up earlier than the others and she was forced to be more mature, she gets to, as like uh, that constant refrain of teenager, um, mm-hmm. like as like just trying to scrape any bit of respect and maturity because she's getting nothing now becomes so at peace in her role, in her maturity, that she can be young again and enjoy the parts of being a teenager that is being a bit young while being an adult. Um, and so for the others, there it's an attainment. For her, it's a reclamation. And that mm. is really beautiful to me um, because like so much of what defines Lucy is what's been taken from her or what's been denied for, for her. So to find something in herself that she denied herself, uh, restored, is just, ah, it's beautiful. Yeah, very well said. I'm working on an essay. (laughs) (laughs) Preview. It's going to be, it's going to be like, I said it was 40 minutes at first, but then I was like, "Eh, you know, maybe another section, like, it's supposed to be like an awakening (laughs) diagram where we go like, Lucy is best girl because, and then like addressing each (laughs) pillar individually, like, like, listen, in terms of all the way that death affects the universe, Lucy is best girl. In the terms of all the way that nature affects the universe, Lucy is best girl. Just like really trying to be very (laughs) consistent about it. It's deliberately facetious because like the (laughs) fact that there is a popularity contest at all is like yeah. integral to Lucy's character after class ranker, one of the first time oh. we get to see her. Mm. But like it still hurts. I, mm-hmm. it's, it still hurts. And I think that like there's something really cathartic to just absolutely arguing the antonym of like, don't put my girl last, she's the best. <laughs> yes. <sighs> Eight up three. Um three weeks later, uh Verona explains some of her ritual to Avery and has Avery guess the various pillars and what's going to represent them. We see the pseudo awakening of Kennet as Kennet above is introduced to those below and found. Verona thinks about the people that she hopes will be left behind in Kennet's past, aka the mayor. Um <laughs> we meet a very good idea called January March, and Verona is able to look to the future as the new denizens of Kennet below arrive. I really like this chapter. I think it's great. Yeah. I think I yeah. Loved- yeah the beginning where she's making Avery guess because it's both validating that Avery can, you know, figure out like, it's like, okay, Mm -hmm. making sure the logic makes sense, but also Verona just like quizzing the shit out of Avery. Like makes a lot of sense. (laughs) And quizzing the shit out of the reader. Um, I was, I was really vindicated because that was for me specifically. I was doing great. (laughs) Yeah. I I mean, I did horribly. I didn't get any, but I wasn't (laughs) <laughs> I know Elliot said in his library he re- tried really hard to do it as well. I was cool. Like it, it felt like something that you could work out, but I just did try. <laughs> I'm right there with you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Good. good, good. I uh, was uh, more than happy to let them do the work. Yeah. <laughs> and follow along, but that was awesome. Uh, that you. Uh, yeah. Did really I mean, well. Yeah. That's. I mean, that was a great, great chapter, and I know Elliot and Ruben talked about it a bit. Whoever those guys are talked about it a bit in the. <laughs> <laughs> Power Reflections episode. Who's to say? I haven't met him. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've, I've never met him either. Um, <laughs> probably just a bunch of weirdos. Yeah, probably. <laughs> since they eat brilk. <laughs> they do eat brilk. That is incredibly <laughs> freaky. Of them. Um, but yeah, I know. I think especially Elliot was talking about how great this chapter was as a send off, um mm-hmm. as a concept, and I, I really like that. And I really, yeah, I really agree with that. It's you know really nice to see that there is still like that leftover. Because I know we talked about it a lot with Ken, um, the kind of energies and stuff that shaped the town. And a lot of them, I mean, Ken wasn't the nicest person around. Um, and so a lot of those energies of like, I don't know, middle age, white anger at being not world specialist boys anymore because people care about not just white people. Um, I mean, like a lot of the world still does. But anyway, it's a whole tangent. Um, yeah, like there's still that kind of idea and that like fear of the unknown and fear of new people that like kind of holds people back from meeting the denizens and meeting the um, foundlings. But we do see a lot of people taking the steps forward to yeah, meet their new neighbors and mm. accept free things. Um, <laughs> and yeah, there's a lot of suspicion, but <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of suspicion. And I think that really holds true to like, can it not as a character, but like as an idea, like what it, has been throughout the story, um, can it above anyway, in that there has been a lot of suspicion and there has been a lot of yeah, discrimination and racism and like everything. Like it's not historically been the nicest place to live. Um, discounting, you know, can it below and can it found and all the magic, like, yeah. Um, so 
you know, we see at the end that, no, it's not miraculously now that not everyone in the town is like, oh my God, new people. We love new, different, like, minorities, but some people are. And the energies are definitely turning that way um, more than they are staying the same and stagnating with the old mayor. Yeah, the mayor was not, like, a fan. He wasn't a fan, no. Um, he was. But he's kind of an asshole. Special. <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit. Just, just replace him with Verona's mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We like her now. Yeah, she's <laughs> fine. She's having breakfast with her daughter. That's yeah, she's getting there. That's parent something. Something I've got in the notes here um, is the the shape of this awakening diagram. Um, I think that um, one of the first ideas we get introduced to is this toss up between the old and the new of like for, like some like practitioners choose like a fortune pillar and some practitioners choose a nature pillar. Um, and for one, they have got both, which I think is a great idea. Um, mm-hmm. But for two, I I love in Pale how often a like commentary is done with physical things and what is done with physical things. The idea that the pillars are the same, like the, the substance of the world doesn't change, but the structure of the diagram is so different. Instead of a um, circle, like a perfectly geometric, easy to understand stage, it's a complex like difficult to balance but welcoming open crescent that like that cups all of the town like some sort of bucket dare i say a pail um is <laughs> like yes the real meaning comes out the, uh-huh. it's like I, I i i'm i'm such a fan of that sort of material syzygy of like the the the, the shape of things reflecting the meaning of things but mm. Um, besides like that being a personal interest of mine, the, the way that they use this diagram to symbolize a, a new way of things that doesn't emphasize binding, but emphasizes community and ha- thereby having an arc that collects the whole of the, this, the town and all of its different facets without restraining it is really lovely. Um, and at the same time, they use it to redefine the arena, which is this constant place of recurrence throughout pale that was specific, like previously this like effectively like the carmine's um like the contest location the carmine's death place um like uh, constantly returned through uh, as we see can it below uh grow uh for it to become their pillar of death and the, like the the literal pale the uh thing of transformations and boundaries is like, after having a story that is literally all about the Carmine and the Carmine's mm-hmm. death, finally getting the place of that to turn into a sort of graveyard was I like like if we're, if we're talking about tying up loose ends, that's the entire arc like tying up Kennet and the story of the um, Carmine mystery. And like, what a way to do it! Like a, a, a awakening at the very beginning and now almost putting to rest at the end. You forgot one of the most important deaths at the arena the the death of avery's hockey career <laughs> so true. <laughs> and we oh mourn it every God. day <laughs> i feel like it's like yeah. the last time she plays hockey in the story that we see um slash olivia she loses now. yeah that's it yeah. she can't go back <laughs> She got her ass beat by olivia and that was that was that that's it <laughs> she literally ended her whole career <laughs> First crushes will do that to you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> anyway, back to poignant and deep. <laughs> 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 oh that was that was pretty good. <laughs> that was great. Um <laughs> anything up for uh E three or shall I read E four? Um just like this sort of comes up later, but I think that I was expecting um this huge diagram to work faster um but we see like we see there's new people in town and there's cool stuff happening but avery and lucy have a conversation um in the last chapter about kennett and how it's really hard to be there um it's still hard to be there for them um Mm. and they talk about you know they'll always be tied to it and like maybe we can bring the good things back um and like yeah, this is a really important step, but it it's not it wasn't just like a band-aid. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, it, it didn't 
it didn't fix the issues of Kenneth. Um, mm-hmm. No, but it's like but it it's created helped. an avenue. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's helping things to heal or, and and mm-hmm. change for the better. Um, no no crucible incarnate interview here. Just yeah. a slow mend toward better. Mm-hmm. How how do we feel about January March? <laughs> I was thinking about her. Like, I, of course, I there's... have to agree with my Australian uh, friends Elliot and Ruben that have said January March. It's 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 loaded January and March, like especially January. <laughs> you it's don't need another holiday. <laughs> yeah, there's too many holidays in there already. No, but do you really need a piece of chocolate cake? No. <laughs> But you Are wanna. you gonna take it? I wanna. <laughs> yeah, gonna take I was it. gonna say that, like, so all the the um, foundlings and denizens coming out and being like, "Here's a bunch of free shit," and like, there's the people who are like, "Free shit," and there's the people that are like, "What if it's poisoned?" Um, which reminds me <laughs> of like parents on Halloween that are convinced that like their kids there's are gonna get blades, <laughs> right? Like really awful bad things. And um, January March is here for the free shit. <laughs> so true she, she fits with the vibes although it was i don't i found that part really stressful and weird because it was like mm. okay there's a bunch of stuff happening all at once and we got to make sure that it all goes okay also there's this like like god level something coming and we yeah. don't know what it is and we had to learn really quickly about <laughs> m- 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 uh, yeah. it's a very good idea it's like <laughs> Um, she's she's like faceful, um, oh. and the fact that she, like, it's this literal wave of consumerism, I, I feel like that's <laughs> so, like when Verona said, "What if it was just a chill holiday where everyone calmed down for once?" <laughs> that was like that was the idea that I wanted January March to accept because I think that is something that we are genuinely missing in the holiday schema. It like could use Halloween, a more chill. Halloween only keeps uh, Christmas bound out of extending from November <laughs> mm-hmm. out into October because it is so different. And it I think January, March as that. it is, just kind of the sequel. They're already selling, Hall- oh. I don't know, it's just like they're selling Christmas stuff already. Oh. Just drives me nuts. Um, <laughs> I I did I did like her like analogy of like, and it was a crazy analogy that she brought up where like, if you need some money and someone offers you a hundred million dollars, would you take it? And Matthew was very reasonably like, what the fuck? No. Like, there is like, obviously, you can't just catch. take that much. Or... Like, if she'd said, if someone offers you $100 and you really needed the money, would you just take it? I was like, yeah, probably. Yeah. If someone offers me $100 million. There's not a chance. In it. There's like, <laughs> you just cannot trust that much. Yeah. Mm. So I'm I'm right with Matthew there. Yeah, that's just too, yeah, there's, it looks too good to be true. It probably exactly. Exactly. And we don't know exactly what happened with January, March, right? I was expecting some sort of reference to like the new holiday, but I don't think. Well, she didn't want to stay. She did. She just wanted to be mm. there for that awakening festival that and then partying. She so she you also know, probably lent some money and then left. <laughs> There's also no other part of the story that's in January and March. So for <laughs> all we know, she is just fully asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I do really like that she like became a really lively icon thing and stuck to Matthew's shirt. Yeah, that was <laughs> especially when he had gone like full host mode and completely hollowed himself out. Mm-hmm. And he's just like he looks the most depressed, tired person in the world, and he's just got like this little happy little nutcracker <laughs> on his shirt dancing around. So good. So, he he uh... used um the same thing he did in his interlude. He filled himself with earth spirits. That's why he got like tangibly heavier. Um, so the fact that he needed to like brace himself and f- like fill his like his spirit with with the the like the force of the earth, just so he could have this tiny little pin just resting <laughs> on him without destroying his soul, was just that's what you really need to practice for the durability to, to survive another Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> oh man! Uh, like we have we have January March as a thing. They're, they're just i don't know i feel like they'd make another something with too much energy mm. stuff is too expensive anyway we can't afford all this stupid consumerism mm-hmm. sure unless her vibe was like the free stuff free stuff, free stuff. <laughs> free stuff. Free stuff. <laughs> if it's free if, if it's a free slice of, if it's a free hundred million dollars <laughs> yeah See, that's if it, like <laughs> I would, yeah i would take that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, like I, I made you think, think about it, it, but my first response is yes, absolutely. 
<laughs> respectable. Yeah. Respectable. I get it. Like whatever, whatever the cost. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna talk about Wonder Can, but I was like, this sounds great. Speaking of Wonder Can, um, three months later. Avery and the Kelly Coven stage an intervention of Declan's accumulating bad vibes. Uh, Sheridan's raccoon boon companion familiar Smudge is a bit of a butt. Declan, much more so. Uh, But both shape up when offered a bit more carrot than stick, or cricket and coffee protein bar, as it were. We we have a flashback to when Miss first offered Avery the opportunity to find some new friends, and we're reminded how far our Kenneteers have come no longer silent, fuming, or numb. After Declan agrees to the terms of uh, the aware-to-practitioner pipeline, you must now be this tall to ride. (laughs) The Kelly Coven go to (laughs) Wonderkand to meet with Milton. My friends call me Milton. Milton, Milton, a.k.a. Milton. (laughs) Despite offers of power, influence, and an everywhere port and a cluster of lost valuables, terms and conditions apply, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Avery refuses, and the vice head of Northeastern Relations, Milton to the power of five, opens a file on the Kelly family. I, w- I want to know why he still went with Milton. <laughs> it's got to be of all like... the names to have five times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, re- like, your friend, they don't, like, really? Like, that. I feel like it's like the goblin what... thing of like making people say your stupid name is giving you power. <laughs> like, like, there was that but... goblin that uh, America summoned at some point that had some stupid long-ass name that mm. you had to answer uh, every uh, time. Uh, you, you cannot mm. address Slagar who slavishly slays <laughs> by anything yeah. besides Slagar <laughs> I mean, who slavishly is... slays <laughs> names. Otherwise, Slagar who slavishly slays gets power over you. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's that. Um, <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> Sorry, there's I mean, four R's. I mispronounce. It's Slagar. Slagar. You gotta say Slagar every time. <laughs> Let's move on before we all have to say Slagar <laughs> over and over again. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm I'm impressed that you remembered that. So that reminds me of like, was it Reptar from Rugrats? Rugrats. From Rugrats? Yeah, I don't know why, but Reptar. Reptar. <laughs> all right, that's all I have to say. So Malia, you would you would join Wonderkin? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, I think that it speaks um, a lot to how burnt out uh, my soul is <laughs> and how, like, like my values and morals have, like, drifted uh, because, I mean, it just, like, it really felt like, like a law school sort of problem where I went into law school and I was like, I don't need money. I want to help people. And I still want to help people. But the things that lawyers do that really, really help people, like, like, are very, it's like, it kills my soul. Like, like having to, like, read about and think about, like, really bad crimes and having to encounter, like, people who are fleeing for their lives and say, like, here's your court date, you're almost certainly going to get deported. Like, I will do what I can, which is almost nothing. Like, things like that are just so uh, draining um, that I don't know that I have the constitution to do um, a lot of those paths. And then, like, loans and um, debt and other things piling up and the knowledge that, you know, I could be making $200,000 a year, like, as a baby attorney. And... I'm not really hurting anyone. I'm just helping corporations sue each other. And like, who, you know, that's whatever. Who really cares? Like, it's very easy to fall into. I need that money. Yeah. Um, And <laughs> so when it was like, we'll give you money and all this shit, I was kind of like, wow. But then obviously, like, lost our slaves and Wondercan will transform you into someone that wants to perpetuate Wondercan and it's bad. Or worse, but, be called Milton, yeah. Milton, Milton, Milton. <laughs> Nothing. yeah obviously the worst part <laughs> yeah no i mean i'm not gonna lie like i'm kind of like it <laughs> the perks sound nice for the job if you ignore <laughs> all the shitty parts mm. about that company <laughs> which you can't really ignore that but um it's enticing I mean, yeah yeah i mean yeah like it it sounds good but you know that's kind of that's that's wonder canned in a lot of ways like oh it looks really cool and good but what 
nightmare. I think especially it looks with... so cool and good. Just don't look at our graveyard in the closet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's like I can see, especially if, if people are desperate. You know, I can I can see why they get practitioners and people to sign on. Because how do you say no to that if you're you know depending? On I mean, they do have. have a universal language. Like, okay, yeah, that's great. <laughs> like universal translation. I I get that's pretty I get cool. That. Yeah, I that actually sort of caught me as like a, a great encapsulation. Because, you know, like, you could expand your boundaries, or you could force someone to commit to the way you see things. Um, And so like, hey, we've made it so easy for you to know nothing about anyone that you work with. Uh, (laughs) It's, Mm. it's, it's like that. Um, I I wouldn't be able to resist if I was given the offer. Um, I recognize that because there's too much that would just like, gets my high and brain going like okay i want to be on the argumentative floor i want to know all the rituals <laughs> i want to do everything you guys are still talking about hazel 100 years less so am i um <laughs> yeah um but like uh, that would constitute the death of my soul and i i know that and i still say yes <laughs> that's that's your price yeah i mean like there is a lot of perks there i mean yeah there are a lot of but i i do think that comment about the language that you just made is a really really good one because <laughs> you know so much of what we see from avery is like learning to speak the language of the lost um and you know every time you meet a new lost what are they going to be like what's their quirks going to be what's going to be up with them and wonderkand just says no we'll just you know use magic to get around it rather than forging a connection here. we'll just mm-hmm. get around it fuck it i mean like at the same time I would still, I would prefer to do the Wonderkand way, but <laughs> Avery would, Avery would prefer to, you know, fumble along a bit blindly, but try earnestly to communicate and yeah, have a good connection with everybody that she talks to. Oh, it's like, it's the magical version of, you know, selling out to a big corporation mm. yeah, um, or doing it a little bit harder, but having a more local community connection. And there's, you know valid reasons why people like sell out and a lot of it's just you know maybe they're broke as fuck or they need like yeah want a better lifestyle or are already kind of losing their soul (laughs) i don't know Um, but uh, hey you know if you mine the cluster for enough decades you might find a new one (laughs) see there you go another great job perk yeah you know like i i definitely see like the benefits and like I guess, like, like Malia, like, there are a lot of, when I was doing, like, my postgraduate stuff in mathematics, I, like, there was a fair bit of scouting happening, um, and there were things like, you know, the defense force, um, or, like, big banks, or, like, investment firms, and shit like that, and it's, like, you can very easily see how you can go into, like, work like this, and, like, very quickly be earning one to two hundred thousand a year, but at the same time, it's, like, holy fuck, like, they're, like, I would sacrifice, you would have to sacrifice your soul to do those jobs. I don't know, like, I saw a lot of people being interested, but I was I might specifically join if I could have already made a familiar bond with my Forest Ribbon Trail boon companion. Like, just thinking that that's, if that's the child, that that's the one part of the equation that they just don't get, because from the jump, everyone is killing their boon companion when they leave the Forest Ribbon Trail. I, if knowing that the Page of Sons went, they're way off track. They're never going to get there unless someone mm. just does the opposite of what they're doing from within those ranks. I think that would be like a better option overall. Um, so maybe Avery like was the one of the very few people in the world who could have made the tangible difference that Milton was offering in spirit, but like not in word, um, or uh, like or the the the, uh, the opposite. Um, but yeah. I, I, most people don't get that amount of choice. Most people don't get to like like break the mold. Yeah, I think also that um, I'm hoping that in five years this sort of offer won't be tempting to me because I'll be more like where Avery is. Like she's mm. not making a bajillion trillion dollars and whatever, but she solved the promenade, so she has a very powerful boon. She has like a family that is like really supportive and growing in the practice she has kennet um she has the garricks like avery is not um alone and stranded um and 
So I think that like part of why this works for like why this makes so much sense for Avery and I'm very proud of her is like she has the support and resources um to take the harder path the like the right path um in not dismantling the past and like everything that makes them wonderful um but I could see and so yeah like basically hopefully in five years I won't be in a place where this feels as tempting um because it doesn't seem like the Kellys are tempted because like they have a solid place um for themselves yeah yeah <clears throat> also smudge is so cute and ridiculous and i love so that. true ridiculous like, baby boy what a mess oh <laughs> grotesque little makes, gremlin oh it's so perfect too that like they picked a raccoon like are they all just gonna yeah. get like trash mammals like it's so <laughs> it's such a vibe <laughs> i mean i i was totally on avery's side though like if my like brother was like stealing my like like food oh, through yeah. like shit, something uh-huh. else i would be you know shit would hit the fan like <laughs> would not be fucking happy don't get any idea. <laughs> <laughs> it is very childish um I, I wonder if that's like an extension of how snowdrop is like sort of this this constant comedic duo for avery that like in a mm-hmm. wider community of boon companions you end up with this sort of that's just so annoying please stop oh my god this sort of interactions that's crucial in its own way i'm not sure um i think it, it's also because they are like both the boon companions are very young at that point snow is still like a 10 year old smudge would be probably quite a lot younger um because they do tend to get them as as babies because it's easier to yeah. confirm that they're at least haven't shed blood. Yeah, they've probably sweated. It would be interesting to see, like, 20 years later, what Snowdrop mm. would look like. Yeah. Is that adult snow, or is, like, yeah, it would be Does she stop at some point, or does she keep... Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, because 20 years later would be, like, well beyond her, like, normal lifespan. Does she just, like, prematurely become a grandma and just stay that way for, like, <laughs> 50 more years, or what's up? Can you imagine, like, Avery, like, tatted out, like like piercings like doing all this like crazy past shit and there's this like old lady like right behind her like so cool so fucking cool <laughs> doing flips like <laughs> that's the great goblin sage snowdrop <laughs> oh that was a great old that sounds voice. amazing yeah that's that's my that's one of the voices i use for toad swallow um it's, 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 it's just that i try and murder it a little bit and then it, then it hurts but so i won't do that now but um anyway that's awesome okay and then in e.5 three seasons later the kennett school of magic gets underway and we see a quick recap on the others that nicolette once sent against kennett taught by jessica lucy and liberty catch up while heading into kennett found to see some prisoners libs sees her dad while lucy pops in to see kira lynn who is thoroughly unchanged from when we last saw her. Liberty tells us that Gerhild is on the horizon, but leaves us without many specifics. Libs and Luce pop in to see Toady and run an episode of Beast of the Least for the local goblins. Grandfather is now a familiar dog and very comfortable with his new role. Finally, Nora threatens to break up with Avery, but relents when she's shown the world of magic. (laughs) Uh... This is a great one. Like, if you're ever feeling yeah. insecure in your relationship, <laughs> just reveal that you're a wizard all along. Yeah, uh, I can explain everything. I mean, I'm I I know like there's this guy called Elliot who has said that. Um, oh my god, my brain anthem. Um, that anthem is like fine now, and he's like should just be let free. But I really like seeing that. Like, no, like he's still like gonna work some shit off like yeah five like he killed a lot of people like five years mm-hmm. that yeah, seems pretty time. fucking reasonable yeah like That's so i yeah i did really really like seeing that and i also weirdly i really like seeing like carolyn because like it can be very easy in stories to just kind of say like these people die and then these people are like now wholesome mm-hmm. and they're like a lot of the time you don't get that in between of like this person is still alive but like they have no plans to get better like yeah, they're still going to be a, an asshole like and i think carolyn is yeah like a really good you know view like in story of what you do when like you don't want to kill someone but like 
they are what not going to stop them? hating you. They're not going to stop trying to come and kill you. So what do you do? I really yeah. like that. Because, yeah, like, that it's a lot fun. easier to just say, like, and then she died, or, and now she's better, and then, like, put a little bow on it and say, there's the story. Mm. But that doesn't really work in real life. <laughs> a lot of- I think, similarly, it's interesting, like, Liberty is not at the same place as our protagonists are. Like, our protagonists are, like, running the school, and, like, they're, they're, they are, like, they largely have their shit together, and they're largely, like, seemingly satisfied with where they are and where they're going and liberty's not like um like the story where liberty is the protagonist like this is not the ending um and it's cool kind of seeing like yeah that she's also she's in a different place um and at a different stage from um our protagonist like similarly hopefully kira lynn will uh change and heal and become a better person um and she's hopefully just on a different stage of her story. Um, but this was a very, like, life continues. Um, and there are still concerns. And there are still, like, we want to make sure these little goblins grow up to be decent goblins. And, um, yeah, there there are still things happening um, in the world uh, that our girls are helping mm. yeah. change. I don't know. Yeah, no, and I, yeah, I really did like seeing um, Liberty there because, yeah, like, she is kind of not quite in, at the worst possible place, but, like, mm-hmm. like she says, like, she's got nowhere to go. Like, she can't, like, spend all of her time with America. Like, she doesn't want to necessarily be in Kennet because of so many different conflating things, um, even though she does relent on that and decides that it's probably the best place to be. But she doesn't feel like she belongs there. Like, she can be there, but she doesn't feel like she belongs. And, yeah, like, that sucks for Liberty. <laughs> like, it's just very clear that she's not in a great place right now. Yeah, I like that she got to spend time with Lucy, especially, who she's not always really gotten along that well with. And, yeah, I especially loved her goblin transformation um, <laughs> into normie mode. That was amazing. Yeah. She's literally forgotten to dress herself, or she's planning to. She's planning. Um, <laughs> I mean, the, it's an interesting life goal. It's, yeah, a, it's a fun challenge. Everyone's you know? got their projects. Yeah, yeah, everyone's got their priorities in life. Um, <laughs> and Beast of the Least was so nice. Um, yeah. Um, the whole thesis of Beast of the Least just being, this is for fun. At most, it is so that the kids grow up all right. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Uh, I, I loved how... Uh, we, cu- we kind of touched on this a little bit and uh, Liberty was delegating <laughs> to uh, Lucy like a goblin. Ah, that was so that was one of those moments that just completely, just pure humor, like, you're completely not ready for it, and then she just like mm-hmm. turns to Lucy and is like, alright, you little dickhead! And I... <laughs> <laughs> so good. Oh, that's great. Mm. The fact that it's Lucy doing that, my goodness. <laughs> I, I, I mean, yeah. we already touched on it. But, like, there, there's that adage of, like, if you can't teach something, you don't actually know it. Like, and, and like, here here we see, like, Lucy getting to joke around and be fun and, like, try and help Liberty, who's still, as you said, on, on, on her own journey um, through to start making improvements. And it's just in a way that she never could have, uh, even, like, even three seasons earlier. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, it's just really lovely uh to to get to see the that payout yeah it's really nice to see yeah that was her soul like it's not quite the end of lucy's journey because i mean we see like three years later but like it's so perfect as like a way to like round out who she's become in kennet um as someone that is no longer the like the duelist like she doesn't head out to the um, perimeter every day to fight back the monsters or whatever that she gets her guitar out and plays a little song for some local goblins that are tiny just has some fun and teaches cherry pop how to have a good memory because i definitely skimmed over the fact the first time that cherry pop had remembered and then like then when she said oh i'm training their memory i was like wait what the fuck cherry pop remembered something from a week ago like that's (laughs) fucking crazy yeah (laughs) basically a miracle yeah Fucking mind blown completely. Like Lucy Ellingson, true sorceress. <laughs> yeah, like, like that. That is the greatest <laughs> tier of magic, right there. She, she yeah. just put Where did the thought even go? It can't title. fit. She's so small. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so it's so brilliant. And you know the 
the little fairy that's there that oh is <laughs> pretending to be a goblin and it's like oh my god like i love this so dumb and so amazing <laughs> Um, I was reading uh, around the time the chapter was coming out, this was, this was in the Discord discussing it, that her name, uh, I don't have it in front of me, but it's it's Pistol got the... Pistol do. Pistol do. Um, Pistol is the, is the rude part of the flower. Um, <laughs> it's one of the uh, the reproductive organs. Um, so, like, sure, it's like a pistol as in, like, a gun, but it's also, like, it's the effect... It's effectively be call- being called, like... Um, like pre cum on the tip of a dick, and I just think that's <laughs> such a great name for crossing the two that's different really cultures. Great. It is great, yeah. yeah. Her original name was a better goblin name than her fake goblin name. Yeah, <laughs> and then are uh, the the toad goblin as well. That was so. I don't know about you guys, but I saw the toad goblin being described, and I was like, she's still here, and she's still got the toad. Oh, and she matched, like she dressed it in a bikini. Oh. <laughs> That's a true so, success story right there. This is what yeah. Canada is about. That's the badass thing, which I'm like... It was, it's I mean, a matching bikini. It, but it's, it's, that's pretty badass. I mean, I think it's adorable. <laughs> it is. Adorable. No, that was, yeah, that was really cool. Like, the entire Beast of the Least section is just so good. And then also we get to be like, okay, before we read E.6, we get to be, like, terrified about Gerhild that just, like, killed a <laughs> goblin that is, like, bigger... <laughs> as a goblin than Charles was as a judge. And it's yeah, like it's terrifying. Like that's fucked. Like, yeah, that's some yeah. A while by really hitting us with the bait and switch there, coming up with Gerhild. Mm. But like just like continuously like hyping it up in the background as like, you should be scared of this character. Like shit is happening. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, yeah it's crazy. Gerhild the red herring queen. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. It was in the name all along, uh, Omens, you know? That's it's, true. It's, it's exactly as uh, as uh, uh, I, Jessica was trying to teach us in, in the, right. uh, the school episode. It was like, right there. Color is, color def- like, is a signal, and the signal was like, don't bother, it's not her. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I actually, yeah, speaking of like, the school, like I did like that it was actually mentioned a, like, a little bit in 8.2, I think, um, or 8.3. But like, it's just like a very like, oh, we'll teach some people, you know, a little bit of stuff. And then we see it here and it's like, it's like structured lessons with like guest teachers, which is great, but it's like, it's still very like chill, you know? Um, and then again, like we'll get to it, but like it's mentioned in E.6 that like, oh, a bunch of the Montreal families have sent their kids to your school. So of course, like we know like who you people are. And it's like, what a glow up in three years! Like, oh my god! From Listen, literally, you, you don't, just a thought. You don't organize the death of three separate headmasters without learning how to run a school. Okay? <laughs> it's 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 this it's the same system uh, as dog tags. You know, you kill one, yeah. you get to steal their power. It's not complicated. <laughs> yeah, I I just I really like that how we because I think it you know it's kind of been talked about in the fandom a little bit that like you know, the Kennedy is running a school, like, what that, what would that look like? You know, it kind of feels like something that that would really, that they would really do well and that they would really love to do. And then, yeah, we see that, like, it does seem to be going really well, like, even in this early time when they're getting, like, guest teachers in and, you know, barely paying them enough and they've got this shitty old projector and everything. But, like, they still have, like, a bunch of locals around and they're able to say, like, hey... Alpi, you know, tell us a bit more about omens. And then Alpi's like, well, you just rip them apart with your bare hands. They run away from you. And then everyone else is like, that's not how it works for us, but good for you. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Alpi. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, so like, sweet of her to explain that to us all. <laughs> just use your hands. Was, yeah. Don't worry about yeah. it. Uh, humans with their nervous systems. I'm like, all right, Alpi, geez. They go um, well with stew. <laughs> gosh. <laughs> but no, that was like, that was really cool. I really like it. I mean, I really liked all of these chapters, but I especially liked this like section in the school and with shit pants who, uh, what, what was your, Oh, you guys can't call you shit pants. What's the name on your birth certificate? Oh, unwanted fucks up. Okay. Pants. It is <laughs> oh, fuck, it's so good. Fuck man. Can it blow everybody? Can it blow? That's, that's, yeah. The home that's of broke. Real can it blow shit? Yeah. That, yeah. Broke is straight up. Can it blow? That is mm-hmm. so Nutritious. Hard to keep down. <laughs> Um, yeah, then we, yeah, we get to see, um, Nora and Avery at the end. And I want to say that last time I was 
on as a guest. Um, I asked Wildbo to please let them be all good and together at the end of the story, and he's done me. Oh, he's done me good. Mm. Don't worry, Bo. I'll good drop job. an extra five dollars into the old Patreon. Uh, Kip, <laughs> you, Kip, you mean that while you were hosting the podcast? Yeah, yeah. While I was, yeah, while I was hosting the podcast last time. Yeah, that yeah, particular yeah, episode right. that we did together. That's right. Yeah, yeah. But no, that was like <laughs> we've that was really cool. This see. is not the first time that we've spoken. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Of course, every single week for the last three years. Um, mm. Yeah, like just that whole thing with them sitting on the paths and Nora just kind of like taking it all in and Snowdrop coming along with some triple chocolate cake, and it was just like, oh my fucking heart, man! Like it was so good. It and Nora perfect. remembered her name. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> The fact that Snowdrop probably prefers Octavia because she says she didn't like it when she was first met, and that means that she did like it, is yeah. mm-hmm. still messes with me. It still fucks me up. That's yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> Everything when anyone is first interacting with Snowdrop, actually, no, anytime Snowdrop's in the in the book, it's hilarious. Um, <laughs> yeah, or like yeah, like as soon as like Snowdrop shows up and she's like, "Ugh, you're still here. That sucks." <laughs> <laughs> You're so annoying. And then Avery's like, Jesus Christ, just turn into a fucking opossum and stop talking, please, Snowdrop. Like, you're not helping. <laughs> well, it's so good. Like, we see her running up and we're like, yeah, this is so great. And Avery, like, like barely remembers, oh, yeah. everything she says, it's the opposite. And it's like, no time to explain what that means. And immediately, <laughs> just like, oh, fuck you. I wish you left. Like, <laughs> uh. Oh, Nora's so such a champ. How do you roll with anything? Yeah, she's yeah. like full. On, she just straight up rolled with those punches. Like, yeah, she did good at just being like, oh yeah, magic. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, she was really great. And like sitting there with Avery and then deciding, yeah, let's go on a walk. Like, let's just walk the realms and we'll talk after. Is mm. like, yeah, so perfectly. The, the Avery. cutting edge of path running, walking slowly. <laughs> Walking slowly, <laughs> taking a leisurely stroll. But it's just like, it so perfectly fits to Avery. And mm-hmm. yeah, I love it. I, I thought it was great. All right. Last but definitely not least, our sixth epilogue, three years later. Verona's shop is going strong as we see her making plans for her next cycle of wandering. She solidified her place as a caretaker for those that need her help and lives comfortably with her employees. Macaulay, Juliette, Jis, Dish, and Pecker. Rook pays a visit and Verona trauma dumps at her before Rook gives her the big news. Lucy has moved into student accommodations for her uni. And while she's having some difficulties, not being the solo person of color in the town is giving her some peace. Lucy discusses dating with local practitioners, then heads off to meet Avery for her ride to Verona. Avery and Nora seem badass as hell. And the four of them head off to see Gerhild at the Alcazar of her decapitated head we hear Gerhild's final words. They took my blood. They took my fire. They took my darkness. Now they bring them to the people. I wish th- I could see what they do with it. <laughs> that alone makes me like, just like this chick must have been fire. Like that's incredible. Like, yeah. we, like we need more. <laughs> you're dead. And you're so as you're a, dead. As a bunch of people are about to decapitate you. This is what you say. Like that's... You're like, yes. <laughs> do I... good with the power. <laughs> I don't think that was quite it, um, because it's an Alcazar. So that was like the probably the final thought in her head. But mm. the thing that that got to me about that is that the the girls have done this triumvirate ritual to like oh. solidify that ne- mm. even now. Oh my gosh! Like, right. That wasn't that wasn't just a circumstance of awakening. We're definitely besties for life. Um, yeah. And like now it's like a pseudo familiar bond. Um, and th- there's they, there's this moment where they they go up to each other and they hold hands. And they just kind of extend their power. Um, yeah. And after an entire story about solving murder mysteries when red people are uh, killed <laughs> under mysterious circumstances, <laughs> probably by the Fae, the, uh, Lucy's ability to hear things, Avery's ability to connect, and Verona's ability to riddle out just converts this whole puzzle into an answer for us in one chapter. So, like, this was, <laughs> this could have been the sequel series. This could have been like, <laughs> oh wow, the, the the Carmine investigators are back at it again for a, a, another adventure. No, they just add like the, the power of friendship has become too good at solving murder <laughs> mysteries. They just hold hands and destroy the whole Alcazar in one instant <laughs> and get this really terrifying answer. Um, 
And I love that because, like, if each of these stories is the culmination moments for um, the the individual Kenneteers, now we see that their friendship is stronger than ever. Um, and ha- it's like they not only have they matured, but they have surpassed the challenges that were posed to them when they were kids, and that's so cool. I just, yeah, this is probably my favorite of the epilogues. Like, I love them all, but this one was so. I love seeing Verona three years later. She's so wholesome. She's helping so many people. And like her and Macaulay are so like sweet as like little platonic like roommates for life. And then everything. Oh my God, they were roommates. (laughs) Oh my God, they were. (laughs) I'm like, yeah, I just, I love that. I love seeing like how she's trying to help with her, um, the employee whose name I've definitely remembered. Um, It hasn't slowed down. Thank you. That's right. Um, Um, Hudson. Who confused me because. I'm writing a fanfic at the moment with Hudson Moser in it, um, <laughs> who's like the ride equivalent from the other side of the family branch, like the he's Ride's cousin. And then this chapter came out, and I was like, "Wait, <laughs> wait, that is that going to okay? Wait, I, I wanted to be canon compliant. I swear." Yeah. <laughs> um, and, yeah. Uh, like, so I, I, yeah. we don't know if that's Hudson Moser because it, it doesn't get said, but like the bastard of a hostile family dynamic it's it's maybe there um maybe it's unclear there. um but I, I hope not because i totally killed hudson Mister in the first scene so <laughs> <laughs> like that's gonna be hard to backtrack from <laughs> yeah and then like the two kids that wander in i don't know i just i love oh, this one so mm. much like it was just such warm feelings for the verona section and then same with the lucy section and then holy fuck, I'm so terrified of what's going to happen for the final. Yeah. Mm. After years of reading Pale, I like fully thought like, oh, those kids are the first fae. They've been seated in her domain as the like, first foray <laughs> of attacks. They're, they're under glamour and they're going to throw it off and then they're going to take the domain while she's out of it. Uh, the girl hild <laughs> is just a distraction. Like, 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 oh, the, like the, the, uh, the echo that's been sent um, is, is, is someone's yeah. ploy, I assure you. Breezer Ban is at it again. And no, actually, they're like it's like what Nis said. They're they're too safe. They're too well connected. Um, they don't yeah. they don't get to be ambushed and um, like turned into an art piece uh, that has a cool riddle in it. They they get to live. Um, <laughs> they get to live and 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 have have a home with each other. And like what nice cool. <laughs> That's what Nis yeah. was going for. Um, there's her sanctuary. Um, which is why she couldn't say it, because, you know, she can never quite say the thing that she means directly. Um, mm-hmm. But can it's become what she was going for, which is really sweet. Yeah, that is. I really want to be Verona bookshop owner. Oh, it's mm. such a vibe. Really, really and she's already managing to make it travel to, like, a lot of places. Yeah, like once like every couple lot. of weeks. Just, yeah. She's too cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. It's so It's so Verona. She mm-hmm. probably doesn't change the weather, but I feel like if she changed the weather just to be continuously like rainy outside, that just adds to like the coast. And yeah. so I would be down for that. My favorite weather condition is Verona arrives in town. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <sighs> and then, yeah. yeah, like the Lucy section as she's getting set up in her little college dorm was just so nice. And like, she's making friends with these people pretty fucking easily and like yeah. there's you know a little bit of questions around like the guitar and um grandfather but they get like sorted basically straight away and it's just like and we see oh. booker yeah we miss i missed booker it's good yeah. seeing him like have a little freak out about magic um <laughs> yeah yeah and then the the visitor who's you know who comes along and lucy's like oh do i need to like check in with you guys about anything and he's like no 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 like everyone respects the fuck out of you like <laughs> Yeah. Uh, can we check in or with like, you actually like do you want to come to my, <laughs> yeah. like my place later like yeah like how can we help you settle into our yeah yeah can i introduce you to my son um yeah <laughs> <I know. laughs> uh, and yeah like we that was kind of like something that had been going along in lucy's like story in the background is like dating and stuff like that and as she said to the winter fay is that like or she as she almost promised to the winter fay that she would marry into the practice it does seem like she's not that interested in dating outside of the practice, unlike Avery, obviously, and Verona, who wouldn't date. Um, yeah, and having, like, a pseudo-arranged marriage um, is, yeah. Like, I, I like that she's comfortable enough where she is to be able to, yeah, like, marry into something. Mm-hmm. 
Also, can we talk about the audacity that is Rook? Like, oh, love like the when audacity. she shows up, she shows she shows up, and Verona immediately recognizes her, even though it's like it, they haven't seen her since before they defeated Charles, and that's fucking crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's <laughs> insane. There's something about this where I was like, wait, you've seen her. What, what's that, um, that. like that. Sailor Moon like meme of my work here is done? You didn't do anything. <laughs> 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 <Just Yeah. laughs> I yeah, feel like I, she yeah. kind of confirms, like, yeah, I lose. That's my thing. So I wasn't going to be on your side. And I was like, I love you, Rick, but also, what the fuck? Yeah. And also, yeah. like, the when you lose, you have to make sure that you're in like the best possible position to benefit from mm-hmm. it, which is, again, what she did. So she set herself up to lose and gain the most that she could from it, Mm -hmm. which is, yeah, really, yeah, really good. And I don't know. I loved her. She was so good in this scene. I like, she's always good in every scene she's in, but like just walking in with this like huge flock of crows behind her and just, yeah. (laughs) moment. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So good. Like, yeah. I I love Rook. I I only just understood that on some level it being a crooked Rook means that like, it wouldn't be good for protecting the king if you castled. So, like, it would make you lose more than, like, be the most, like, better at advantageous position. So, like, if in chess, it would be this piece that would betray you. Um, hmm. uh, and, um, gosh, the, the idea of an Oni that knew there was such a losing battle that she committed to that bit is just, I'm almost heartbreaking. Yeah, I, th- I mean, yeah, there's definitely, there's always been a lot of heartbreak in rook's backstory and she even says now that like you know when she was wandering and when she met miss like she was at an incredibly low point because she had nowhere to be and that she's kind of never really had anywhere to be since we've seen her in the story because she didn't really belong in kennet kennet was not a place for her and it's kind of tragic um but hey maybe with all of these new fae becoming more only like she'll get some new friends yeah Yay. new new team to sabotage everybody <laughs> Oh my goodness! Um, yeah, the new Fae are like fucking terrifying. But mm. I mean, we got we got to see the new goblins a bit, where like we heard that Verona is very tall now, and then Toadie is the same height as her, which is like, oh, what a glow up from this little like three foot tall dude. Mm. Like, I feel I a little bit name. bad because I immediately assumed that that was like goblin gunk and not like that he grew because I mean, I like, assume goblins. it is goblin gunk. But it is, both, you know, like uh, th- this. We, we have yeah, it further like, down in the notes. Um, but like the the best I understand it, the deal with Toadie getting bigger is that while gunked up, he was able to like like every time he leaves for the transformation, he's a little bit bigger and like mm-hmm. it stays with him. And like the one one thing we know of Toadie from the flashback with um, Bubble Yum. Um, is like that he stopped growing stri- almost straight away. And he noticed that he stopped growing very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, so like things like leveled out for him. Um, the, the 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 there's so much joy in him finding an avenue that works. And like the the thing with the gunk is that it does accrete layers, right? Like it's like it's it's not like glamour where you shatter through it and you de- demolish all of it. It's just got like stacks upon stacks upon stacks of grossness. Um, mm-hmm. And by accumulating that and like, like and building something that he's been attached to the market, um, he has been able to accumulate real like growth. Um, and the, so he gets to outlast Gerhild for sure. And I think he's a, a better <laughs> choice as far as representations for goblins go, um, mm-hmm. especially going into the new face entry. And I, I love the idea of like, a new goblin being like a primary antagonist of the new fae, like, and how the new fae seem to be more about destruction and breaking things down um, with their hellfire and etc. Mm-hmm. Whereas like the new goblins are more about building things up and like really trying to, yeah, build community and like um, make those that are like lesser become greater. And hello, mm-hmm. Egwene, you're looking very cute. For those at home, there's a kitty. <laughs> kitty. I'm so glad I'm not filming at the the um, house with cats. Um, I I had to ask a friend if I could borrow space. I've I've stolen their room for the day, um, and like my like Iggy and Lulu are um, off ripping into things um, <laughs> elsewhere. Otherwise, the mic would be destroyed. <laughs> I had to seal them away. 
um, like hellfire. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a little bit confused at the end of this chapter. There's so there's like there was a conversation about blood, fire, and darkness, and it was like this thing was the blood, and maybe there was hellfire, and now we're going into darkness. And I was really confused as to what was happening. Does anyone? So blood was this, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we're going into hellfire, or we're or we're not going into. I just, we're, I just we're like going into hellfire and darkness. So like the blood is like the new fate, like actively and openly attacking their enemies, um, like Gerhild screws, mm. um, which they seem to not really want to do unless they can kind of get away with it. Um, mm-hmm. And then the darkness is like the the social deception kind of war, like the spying and yeah, being the things that go bump in the night um and fucking with innocence and stuff like that um and then the hellfire is hellfire <laughs> red <laughs> sounds bad um I, I was i was also a bit confused but we also have two books to come of plex and pyre and pyre seems like a pretty good fit for fire um and like if if plex would align with darkness that would make a lot of sense um so i i yeah I, I, i'm not sure either but um there's definitely lots to look forward to and it's probably all three <laughs> Yeah, sweet. I I wouldn't be surprised if um if Plex is more darkness and then um and Pale is more blood. Plex is darkness and then Pyre is um yeah. And you know, reading this last chapter and that last section just kind of immediately has you being like, oh my god, I want Paul, like I want Pyre right now. Mm-hmm. It's just but, like I'm so excited for next week when I get to keep reading the story. Yeah, <laughs> like I got so hype. Um, and I'm curious to see what Wildbo does with sci-fi. But arc 25, let's see it. <laughs> God, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, and honestly, like as much as like this is very hype and it makes me want to immediately like continue reading. Like Wildbo, good on you for taking a break, buddy. Fucking hell, it's been a long time since you have had one. So Mm-mm. yes, you need it. Yeah, we're just excited. Yeah. yeah we're just we're excited um but we can be excited and patient so yes and if anyone ha- hasn't read the um end not chapter but section after e.6 uh make sure you go and read that short little recollection on what pale's been like for wildbow and <laughs> yeah it was a good little read it's almost as optimistic as the epilogues it's so sweet the tone yeah. <laughs> carries over yeah now that we've le- leaving fiction behind everything is also getting better in the world ah oh, lovely <laughs> Yeah. Do we have any more specific comments on these chapters, or should we move into? Let's go on and move into loose ends. So, what what are loose ends? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, <laughs> loose ends are defined as a detail that is not yet settled or explained, coming from the frayed threads at the edge of a wider fabric. Um, so you know, it's almost like the the, the untied ends of the story. It's in some, um, <laughs> it's 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 pretty apt. <laughs> it was yeah. very yeah. It's a great title for these. Mm-hmm. The the thing that um we mentioned earlier that sort of sense of learned dread uh, of like as I was reading Verona's chapter, especially like this final epilogue old instincts were like oh my goodness there's gonna be a fight it's gonna be terrible like this they're setting the groundwork for an ambush and it just wasn't um the (laughs) loose ends in pale have this special definition of the um the ribbons like as per the forest ribbon trail um they're they're a sign of danger as the the dimension of connections threatens to stag you with something serious um so these epilogues do have that tense tone where any tying up of loose ends suggests a certain amount of peril where like we have uh kira lynn um putting her word on killing lucy's mom which would be fucked up um hey i would hate that um just saying like like don't orphan our girl and um there's uh the the the, the various like perils of like the like milton 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 um and um I think you missed a milk. Like January, March. Um, <laughs> there's plenty. Um, so like we really do g- continue to exist in the space of like, like, hey, this is still a dangerous setting. This is still a place where things can go very wrong. Yeah. 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 I'm glad we all agree. <laughs> <laughs> Any other definitions we can think of? Any other ways that it apply? I mean, aside from mm. the phrase to tie up loose ends, but obviously that feeds right back into I guess there's 
there is Avery's implement. <laughs> is that her implement? Is implement? Question. Potential implement Unclear. or boon? It could just be a great boon. Um, yeah. But it is her literally reaching out to make connections, and I feel like that's her. Because, like, it. I mean, I was like, is that a ribbon from the ribbon forest ribbon trail did you go get that like is it just that you've that's made a, really a white ribbon your implement like what i just yeah you know oh hang on um the one of the boons for the forest ribbon trail um the thing that miss particularly pointed out to avery um as like something that most path of uh, uh, find most finders wouldn't know was the the odd one out a a, a um a branch that um I, I think it was that didn't have a ribbon on it or specifically had a, a different colored ribbon on it um and if you took that path one you could take your boon companion with you two you can get a alternate and familiar means of movement which is what avery has always had she's had the black rope and she's had snowdrop so she did mm. m- manage to attain that without getting the detour but presumably sheridan would have taken the detour so that she could keep um her boon companion and get an alternate ways of movement um but if you were to run the forest driven trail again and get to pass the second uh uh path part of the path possibly by um by way of much like the promenade needing to leave and come back in order to get to the uh, part two where everyone else closes off at part one i think mm. that a ribbon extender like a, 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 this this ability would be a really coherent boon to have received so maybe if it's not our implement and it is a boon maybe this is the boon for passing the second part of the forest ribbon trail which should make her mm. one of the first people to do so ever and also mean that it would be a really strong boon, like it is. Mm. That's well reasoned. That's very bold and specific. Well, mm. that's the that's, that's the task. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of things, questions about that scene in particular with Avery and Nora. So, is Nora a lost adjacent practitioner? Has she run the forest ribbon trail? Where is her boon companion? Because I think, I I think, think it'd be cool be... if she picked a practice that's like about like being grounded um because i mean we see her do that cool earth rune thing and so if mm. it's kind of like like to try to help avery like balance avery and so maybe she didn't hasn't run the forest ribbon trailer or whatever but i was just like where well i think i think she has to be it has to be yeah. okay. i mean it would seem wild if she was like no, I'm gonna be an enchantress, or just like no, I'm gonna whatever. Like, but also not like this lost shit. I'm gonna do something completely <laughs> separate. Like, <laughs> but also like that's cool. Like they, I think they were kind of like to Declan, like, hey, you don't have to like be a lost person, a lost and like boy. we know he's going to do something with the paths or whatever because he just is going to. But um, the idea that Aura's just like nah. I'll totally run paths with you, but this other thing is super cool. Yeah, She's almost like Nora the Explorer. Nope. No. Nora the, no. like, stay home or <laughs> <laughs> Nora, the comfort of my couch. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you laugh? Oh my god. <laughs> it's so dumb. Anyway. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, also, I missed the chapter banners. It felt like Mm. naked and exposed without them. yeah i yeah it was very weird somewhat loose and untied perhaps uh, anyway uh, trying to trying to find any extra depth in the name but it's just <laughs> correct it's just the correct <laughs> name <laughs> yeah i'm like is it just because i mean part of it the last chapter um no they still sort of fit like i'm like they've grown beyond uh those images um and like blossomed and whatever um but they still seem like vibes that fit but maybe it's just yeah like the story is over and so we are not doing this did the prologue have a banner i think so hold on i had the prologue open just before it does have a banner it has lucy's banner without lucy yeah i don't know man inexplicable should have commissioned whole new art for just the epilogues. <laughs> just the epilogues. Where just is my art. splash art of, like, where is that picture in, of extra materials? Avery and Nora on the beach. That's what I want to see. Like, I sh- see show me right. them oh. happy. I just want to see the decapitated head. <laughs> <Yeah. Alcazar. laughs> 
<laughs> There's that? something for everybody in Pale. There's something for everybody. <laughs> oh my god, Jenny. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, yeah, updated banners. I like the them on the beach. Um, I was like, yeah, obviously Verona at her bookshop, some sort of thing. Um, Lucy playing guitar. His yeah, grandfather. Grandfather. Head, and you know. girls. <laughs> <sighs> that would be a, a difficult commission to fit all those into one yeah. banner. Like January, March, that... Kira Lynn screaming loudly. Yeah. 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 There you go. <sighs> yeah, no, Wild Boy mm. was always doing something very particular with the banners. And I didn't always get what he was doing, but I there's a reason why the banners aren't here. I just don't know you what know. it is. Just don't get it. Yep. There's a lot of things where I just don't get what he's doing, but I just enjoy it and go along with it anyway. It, exactly. works. it sure does work. It works. <laughs> shall we shall we go into bold and specific predictions? Yeah. Um let's do it. Of course, for for those that have uh, been listening along with us these last three years, we would all know that we make bold and specific predictions for the oh, yeah. uh, arcs to come. But let's instead do some. Uh, where are they now? Um, like, what has happened to the people that we don't get to see? Um, you go first, Phoebe. Uh, sure. Um, I think that the Petersburg are Forgiven are making a sequel to the Crucible called the Potluck. Um, <laughs> It's basically the same, but you run it in teams and you have to overthrow the historical systems through the power of friendship because they paid attention to Pale the book. Perfect. Really, Lynn. <laughs> yeah. We see that I'll... Jeremy and Mia are awakened um, mm-hmm. in the last chapter, and I have no fucking clue what Mia's doing, but Jeremy gives off very strong, like, technomancy sorcerer vibes. Mm. So um, maybe he's like um, a print, not like like casually apprenticing with zed or something i bet mia is trying to organize a squiring with lucy <laughs> uh, biscuit is set up in the Kennet below kindergarten and that's where she lives now oh she's giving Serving them all free frog. drugs yeah <laughs> <laughs> such a good role model ah, we love biscuit. <laughs> truly the best goblin all right mine is that george is still unsuccessfully trying to convince everyone to restart the arcade. (laughs) (laughs) They're never going to restart it. And he's still going to keep trying. (laughs) They're never going to do it. Almost despite. Just because Uh, he's being really annoying about it. (laughs) That moment in Verona's chapter where she has Georgia off screen... I, I was so certain that George had transitioned, oh, and then we get George oh. mentioned again. And it's like, okay, not yet, buddy. Okay, take your time. <laughs> not yet. Amazing. That's awesome. I like these other two that you mentioned. Oh, thank you. Um, I I think that um the milkmaid discovered plant based milk substitutes. Um, they're not cruelty free; they're cruelty full. Um, so they do work for her <laughs> as a bogeyman. Um, and and now runs a profitable vegan restaurant in Kennet Below. Um, uh, Nicole Scobie and her abyssal cow are livid. <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna add on to your milkmaid plant based milk, except I'm gonna go in a little bit of a different direction. Mm-hmm. Just because, like, what was just compared to plants that Alpi got really mad about? Mm-hmm. Those oh, eyeless, yeah, thingies. right. So <laughs> the, the milkmaid the... is getting eyeless diphlotic milk. <laughs> so <laughs> technically, <laughs> plant kind of, of based course. milk. Yeah. Milking the squid people. Uh, Milking the why squid didn't I people. think of that? <laughs> <laughs> it's so obvious now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, maybe there's different types because, you know, people have different, you know, <laughs> different preferences. Some people want, you know, soy milk. People want almond milk. Some people want regular dairy milk. So mm. maybe she's just expanding. I, I I can't have my morning coffee if it's not typhlotic. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't have that same, you know, like bad vibe to it. Like if if it doesn't feel like it's from the alien it's just xenomorph, that extra little kick, that extra little something, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's something for everybody in Pale. <laughs> yeah, there is. Oh, so. Uh... Um, and the, the last one I have written down is that Nora takes drumsticks as her implement because that just feels right. Mm. Like it, I like, that. It, like it does what you'd think it does. It you you tap it, it makes a loud noise, and it does that grounding rune. That just seems like her. 
That's cool. That you could like spin it's the really drumsticks good. and I don't yeah. know what that would do. Well, well, it would gather cool. up force so that it hits harder. There, there you go. Amazing jams. Um, also, just as an aside, just because this is definitely relevant. Uh, apparently, loose ends also uh, are a British R and B band that had some several hit records through the 1980s <laughs> and into the 1990s. The missing so piece many. of the 100 the years piece. lost puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> You're now welcome. we have all the information. <laughs> I understand now. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> You're so welcome. <laughs> Uh, yeah it was really important with the drum (sighs) okay well let's pose the question to your tired mind um instead of the uh question of what kenneth other would you like as your familiar what other that we've seen in pale would you like as your patron to empower your practices Hmm. you know i feel like this is a bad idea perfect but it's not like the worst bad idea. There, there's a lot worse ideas, but the first one that came to mind is January March. That's right? such a bad yeah. idea! Holy fuck! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, very quickly, are you sure that you're not the caretaker for January March? Because it's mentioned that she has ch- children that need to be cared for. Because <laughs> it could just be you. I mean, no, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not. Um, that's a good point. So, uh, other verse, Jenny, very busy with January March. I'm, I'm really fucking busy. <laughs> My two darling uh, months, January <laughs> and March. Tying yourself uh, to that when it's like it's so powerful as well. That's like the most horror. Like if it was just like a little chill spirit of January. Look, like there's, of the whole I day still January, stick, stand by that there are worse ideas out there. But mm-hmm. I, all, I but also so did say. Ones. It's not. It, yeah, look, I didn't say it was a good idea. I explicitly <laughs> said it wasn't a good idea, but still, the first one I thought of, and I'm sticking to it. Why? Because uh, I don't actually have to do it, and it's for the <laughs> podcast, and it's a choice I made. So Mm-mm. that's what, just you know, I could spread like the joy of fucking January and March, <laughs> New Year. Yeah, it's New Year. Um, yeah. Which New Year, new you know, meme. That's mm. tea, that's right. <laughs> it's that. Like yeah. you know, you could like tamales is like or no pozole is like a New Year food, which uh is a type of soup, which is delicious. It has hominy in it, which is made from corn, just because no one knows what the fuck that is. Um <laughs> and it's something that we grew up having. And so I could just add that in because then at least, hey, I get free pozole for life. <laughs> That'd be yep, nice. That's one thing. Uh, <laughs> the most terrifying practitioner ambition we've heard of in the entirety of Pale. Yeah. <laughs> to introduce a new soup to the global, mar- global market and make hominy soup. catch on. That's right. <laughs> Fucking hominy. It's good. It's good. It's good. I don't know why I said it three times, but it's because it's three is the magic number. Three. It's, that means it's, yeah. yeah, that means it's really it's fucking good. It's a very, good. very, very good idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm having a hard time deciding. So, like, yeah, I'm like, do I want a really powerful, uh, like, Page of Sons or like, oh like something like that? But then it's like my whole thing will be this thing. Um, I want some like. I'm trying to think of all the cats in what's her name's house. There's got to be a cool cat. Um, Blankchanks, Castleberry. Maybe just all of them. Then you'd get a good like vibe. Well, like I if I could like... get all of them to be like, yeah, sure. <laughs> A well-rounded. Well, okay, so you're Mrs. Shaft. Shaft. Got it. I'm Mrs. Yeah. Shaft. <laughs> you should do the Book of Sons. Go all in, Malia. Mm-mm. Or the I'm Footnote the of page. Sons. <laughs> yeah. The Web Serial <laughs> of Sons. The web yeah. Serial. Oh, that's too much. That's, that's too even much. more than January, you March. Pop at the seams. <laughs> that's right. That's uh. How can you me, resist? No. It 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 has to be Tashlet. Uh, like total cop out mm. because I said Tashlet for familiar, but it's also Tashlet for she's wonderful patron because yeah, she's wonderful. She does like healing. She cares for people. I'm like you know, in my day job, I care for people and I at least try and do some mental health healing, um, even if I don't do physical healing like she does. Um, plus, she's very trans in her vibes. Like growing up, one thing like feeling comfortable in that you know feeling comfortable in it getting to puberty everything starts changing it all goes fucking horribly and then being like oh god how do i like fix this shit it's very she's very and then kind of like you know 
the self-loathing around the body, like, and all that. It's just like, oh, I she's can't. herself in her dreams. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really sweet. yeah. It's so sad. Um, I love her. So she would be my choice for patron and familiar and bestie. Mm-hmm. An excellent choice, truly. It's a great choice, and I feel like an idiot because I started right when right when you started talking about that. I was still thinking about January, March, <laughs> and just the thought I had going through my head was like, she looks like a nutcracker. I wonder if she would crack nuts <laughs> for me. <laughs> and, then you go, and then you start talking about this it's very like, it. you know, deep emotional like, wow. trouble. But like, no, yeah. no, 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 no. The real question <laughs> like, is real. using the practice <laughs> to crack so as many nuts as possible for snacks. Now that <laughs> that's, is, that's, right. that's the hot button issue that's, of today. That's the yeah. fucking... <laughs> You know? That's what Plex yeah. is all about. <laughs> this mm-hmm. shows like how in depth like some of us really are, just in our <laughs> thinking, and uh, you know, some of us actually uh, think about meaningful shit, and some of us think about snacks. Yeah, uh, it reminds me of a formative short story that Jenny and I read as children by Patricia C. Reedy that I think I've already brought up on a podcast before, but Rikiki and the Wizard. She's about this little mm. like squirrel god who wants nuts. <laughs> And it's great. <laughs> I forgot about that story. Oh my God. So and maybe instead of many, many cats, you could be the the, the russet squirrels that are like fauna ephemera. I don't and want the racist ones. No, you don't want the racist squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that you could get much worse than the racist squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> the worst possible patron. <laughs> it's, at uh, least the pale, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you know the squirrel god wants nuts, so that's true. And then Malia, we do? could be the nutty sisters, <laughs> so we're both like nut adjacent, <laughs> which is a weird thing to be adjacent. <laughs> it's, so it's, funny. it's a weird choice. <laughs> but I was say, what, are you, what poignant thing do you have to say? <laughs> I'm glad I've got a reputation. Um, I, I'm, I'm a toss up between um, the Turtle Queen and Exalt <sighs> Rotten Abundance. Um, mm. because as much as like I love glamour and scrivening stuff with like bugs and and mimesi, um, they they're not really they don't have substance. They like they are viral and they pass if you get rid of them, and um, they're very mind controlly. So even if I love the aesthetic of the Turtle Queen, Exalt Rotten Abundance was that spirit lord that took over from um the uh the Aurum and mm. is described as having just a fleet of animus with uh with them and w- like with her and she um has the, the the thing that caught me was that they're not like aligned with war so this would have to be anima animus like nina the librarian um and i really love the idea of having a patron who's like your mission today is this that the other i'm going to send you the best people for this job and i just need you to to like smooth the edges because they can't really do anything outside of their niche um <laughs> so i need you to get the librarian to talk to the sword bearer to to work with the the dog of war that we've hired and like i i, I really like the idea of that sort of like a style of practice that is entirely being the the girl in the chair for an ocean's 11 just every single like encounter um that seems like so much fun um and um she also was very decent to our trio. Um, so I think as far as like the difficulty of if you're like the higher up you go, the more likely you're going to get like a corrupted power. Like no one was going to say the dropped coal, I don't think, uh, or the <laughs> carmine um, or Wonderkind. But like, I think Exult seems to have a good balance. So like that would be the place that I would go. I like that. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, All right. Good answers. Rapid fire. Everybody, who's the best Kenneteer? Lucy. <laughs> Lucy. All the, okay, I like them all right now after the last No cop outs, Jenny. Look, I said Lucy no first. No cop <laughs> Look, you... You gotta pick an answer and then fight to the death about it. I mean, I don't want to die. I'll die for free. But <laughs> I'll send my nutcracker after you. <laughs> if you have any, like, pecans or Brazil nuts... You better You're watch out. Oh, <laughs> She's no. going to get them. She's going to get them and conveniently open them What's Tashlet going to do? Huh? <laughs> Against the, the raw nutcracking power. I know. What's she supposed to do, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no door to knock on here. Oh, my God. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah, you okay. didn't answer. You coward. <laughs> 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 
Okay, Lucy is great. Yeah, she's all right. I could say Avery because no one said it this episode. Avery is fucking great. You know it. And oh, your face is a cop out. So, (laughs) if you want to say Avery because you love Avery the most, then do that. But don't just say it because nobody said it. I don't know. I lost. Um, I love Verona's bookstore. Which me saying that reminds me of something my mom told me. I said when I was like two, because a lady told me that she liked my dress. Apparently, I told her that I liked her ice cream. <laughs> she was getting ice cream. <laughs> kind of the same kind of energy. <sighs> okay. All right. A- oh, Avery. That mm-hmm. feels fine. Okay. She is great. She they're is all great. So good. No, I mean, yeah, they're all great. Like, you can't not. The, yeah. It, I think last time I said Verona, so, yeah. She's just given. They're the all choice. kind of goals, actually. I was going to say they're Avery's goals. goals, but they all are. There's no wrong answer. No, yeah. there isn't. It's just that you gotta be diehard for Lucy because she keeps Ooh. losing the um the popularity polls, and that's just insulting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the I know. injustice like, of it all. The guys. injustice, anyway. It is. <laughs> yeah, the injustice. Lucy would not stand for this. Mm-mm. And they. <laughs> I'll I'll pose the question. Um, given the choice, what do you think your practice might be? And no dabbler or sorceress shit. You gotta pick a main. <laughs> I. Honestly, I the reason I picked it in pace is because I really like it. I think a priestess. Mm. I think I would like to. For who? Do you know? Tashlin. <laughs> cool. Yeah, mm, that's um, accurate. Cool. Or, yeah, look, I won't say not a thing. The vibes are <laughs> I would have to research slightly more that. I feel like right now, at this moment, be a collector. I find a lot of, of shit. nutcrackers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, but um, not only nutcrackers though. Look, I, I I'd have a variety. Like I'm good at finding stuff. I used to call. I used to think my I, my friends used to call me a Hufflepuff because if you've seen a very Potter musical, you know they're very good at finding. You do find random crap. <laughs> I find a lot of crap. Like I'm really good at finding crap. I, I found. Now that now right right now I can't think of anything that I found, but you're just gonna have to trust me. I'm good at finding stuff. Okay, <laughs> finding the thing, sure. Getting immediately losing the memory. I'm just right after <laughs> immediately Capital losing L. the memory. Yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. But I feel like I don't know. I like I think like magical like items seem like a Clem's whole deal. I mean, mm-hmm. her life sucks, so I wouldn't <laughs> want to do that. But like. I would take all of the, and I think it's like it's kind of like a puzzle, like to figure out what it does, and uh, like I'm pretty sure if you ask me tomorrow, I'd have an answer. But Mm. that's okay. Should I collect nutcrackers? Should that be like my thing? (laughs) I think so. Honestly, you want a solid branding. (laughs) If if there were a niche that in the practitioner community (laughs) has been neglected, oh, did you just mean regularly kind of like? Just in life, no, in life. I didn't. But like, I could. Oh, okay. it could be a new <laughs> you could absolutely do that. It's a way to get January March to happen. Is all I'm saying. Yeah, no, I'm <laughs> saying like it could be a thing, like January March, and then get a bunch of January March themed nutcrackers, and mm-hmm. somehow that's gonna make. I don't know. It'll be like a giant nut holiday. January March's January merch. Oh, mm. oh my goodness, great. I've been sitting here trying to think of like what we've seen in like what practice we've seen that isn't like scary and awful and upsetting. And the only one I could think of was like pate. But then I Ooh. bet going to different realms is still really scary and awful and upsetting. So um, I think I do something like with crafts. I don't know if it would be like knitting or cross stitching or um painting or scrapbooking or like a combination but like something about the idea of um making things but also spending time doing like a a tactile and repetitive task um like i like the idea of like like sewing emotions into a thing or something like i um there's like churches where people will volunteer to knit things or quilt things or something and like they're like prayer blankets like they pray for the person who's going to receive um their blanket um or whatever it is they're making and like something about like that's like that'd be like a cool charm sort of thing i don't know Mm. but i feel like the thing that i enjoy doing the most in my life is like crafts and so 
making that a practice somehow would be fun. That'd be cool. You think you would you wouldn't do like a law mage type of thing to Jobby? <laughs> it's he sounded so excited. The <laughs> the the practice is not nearly as forgiving as the legal system. Um, like if you say the wrong thing, you're just like eternally fucked. Whereas in the legal system, you can go and explain like these are were the extenuating circumstances, and I'm sorry, judge. Like this is what I understand now. Blah 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 blah. You have lots of time. Uh, there's lots of briefs. You get to go and like look things up. You don't have to like stand there and be like blam 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 blam. <laughs> like ah, Malia, uh, sorry. I, I you know what? If there's a practice around baking, and I and I'm not. I don't mean alchemy. I mean legitimately like baked goods. Mm-hmm. I want to do that practice. Yeah, I want like cottage core witch vibes, but I don't want to have to do alchemy. <laughs> yeah so that's, true it's like hard and i don't want to blow myself up because mm-hmm. that would suck it's like um magical bake it, it's kind of odd that we don't see well maybe it's not odd but we don't see a lot of crafting magic items or, like it doesn't take a focus in pale mm-hmm. um and at the same time we see a huge diversity of what they can be um like like clem's scarf what is what is going on what like um <laughs> It's it's True. such a useful tool. It 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 completely um like let her so- see right past ten mercy to his weak points. But also, how are you living like this? Um, <laughs> uh, I I I think it's um there was also like the touching on gardening. Do do you think that you'd mm-hmm. be like pro like would it be more like the like crafting something that is like a diagram and built with like interesting materials or trying to cultivate like powers from an environment? They both sound really cool. Like. Thinking about it in pale, when I think of Clem's items, I think of them as like snags in the universe that happen to form into some sort of weird item. But but Ten Mercy is going around like making a bunch of awful shit. Um, and so yeah, I didn't um like the idea of uh like I don't know how to do any sort of woodworking thing, but like whittling a little figurine and then like planting it in an earth so that it can absorb some more cool stuff that all sounds mm. fun kind of like the totems i don't know you can make some I love cool hot totems <laughs> that'd, that'd be really fun to see like with with kenneth found i think of like making the little like mask charms like putting them in the ground or in like special places and then taking them away and getting to take a bit of kenneth found with you um but i i also am a huge gardening fan um like in that magic item creation of like, like turning a place and it's it's what's special about it into a, an item mm. um i think that's like the most likely thing that i would do um as well um in terms of like have a crafting uh, angle except for the fact that i there is not one like crafting hand in my body um i am anti-dexterous <laughs> um i cannot use i should not be trusted with uh appliances for carving anything um, <laughs> that's what the magic's for <laughs> exactly um but um I I really like the idea of spirit breathing, um, mm-hmm. and like th- there is this moment when like Lucy asks why spiders, which I think is a great question. It's what everyone was ha- had on their mind, and S- Scott just says, "I like spiders," <laughs> <laughs> and I think I think that was the legitimate answer of like spirit breathing transmutes air and whatever else you like absorb into something that brings you joy or is like like related to yourself so like maybe if lucy learned it she'd breathe foxes um like like that's like a really clear part of our identity um, imagine hacking up a f- <laughs> well it's like a breath that becomes like fur and such but like it would be real i bet a bad spirit breather has to like have the spiders like crumble out of their mouth instead of like appear <laughs> on balloons in the air so like maybe that's the reason scott's unstoppable because he's just got the the ratio exactly right um it's like what what happens if some for some reason you have to like inhale when you don't expect it or something you know <laughs> like, or like like you know lung full of hair or i that better than a lung full of spiders better than a lung full of spiders possibly but um well, yeah that's, that's probably a genuine trouble that they face spiders might be easier to just survive than a fox. <laughs> so true. 
So true. true Maybe true. that's why Lucy isn't spared breathing. Because <laughs> uh, she, she had this exact conversation and was like, I can't, I can't work with that. <laughs> I mean, let's use glamour. Um, oh, man, that'd be like a really, uh, both of those would be a really fucked up x ray. <laughs> like, oh, it seems to have a full live fox and we're left lung. What a terrible thing. <laughs> yeah, like, what the fuck? Like, wow, like, your lung seems to have collapsed or, like, is, uh, I mean, I guess it wouldn't have collapsed if it's full with Fox, but it, obviously you would not be moving air anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Well, the part of part of the reason I was entertaining the thought for uh, as the practice was that if it is coming from that place of the thing that's like associated with you, a bunch of people probably have to be really careful of that kind of thing. Of like, okay, well, I'm if I'm breathing spiders, I'm current. I, I'm in a much more dangerous situation than most people would be if they were breathing like I don't know hot air, uh, something something much safer. <laughs> um, and the the thing is that um uh, I I like yellow a lot. I like the color yellow a whole lot. Um, and um I try and be a like a sunny person. Um, and I like the idea of like breathing in th whatever is going on in the environment and breathing out like daybreak and like bright mm. and like suddenly everything is in like it's like it's like it's in indirect sunshine um, and uh, like That's illusions cool. start to break and like things that were hidden become revealed. Um, I, I like Ooh. it as a practice that someone could do among innocents because it could be quite subtle or like could like blind them so that they don't know what's going on. Um, <laughs> but like a really cerebral spirit breather of like, no, I can't win in a fight. I don't like, I don't breathe lasers. I can't breathe <laughs> spiders in a wall that then eat you. But I, I can like, in that same sort of Nora way of grounding things, except more in material of like, I have, I have unharshed the vibes. I have, I have uh, removed the curse from the air and I've turned it into warmth. Um, and like everything's got a little bit of like a golden hour glow. Um, this was part of why I was considering the Turtle Queen um, because I, I really love that visual um, of like the the golden sun high in a black sky and like an et like eternally wet and reflective streets. The way she bugged out in whole town. Um, so sp Spirit Breather would be my pick if I if I if it is that easy of just like it's whatever you would best work with. It's whatever like you're most attuned to as a person. That's awesome. I think that's really cool. That's well thought. Yeah, I feel like after this, I'm going to think of something not profound, but <laughs> I'm going to think of something that would be like, that'd be cool. And yeah, because really Nutcracker Collection, it. that was profound. <laughs> <laughs> profound it's, a, it's an unused stupid. niche. You know, there's there's just a bunch of Nutcracker magic items that have just been neglected for years because no one knows how to use <laughs> neglected them. Neglected for years. Like... What is Clem doing with all of hers? We didn't hear, even hear her mention it. And, you yeah, know, geez. she's got to have at least one because, <laughs> you know, they are iconic. If, if, they are. if doll making is an entire practice, then, then there is a Nutcracker family. Ooh, there's a Nutcracker family for sure. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I could be a Nutcracker doll maker. Doll maker? That's horrifying. <laughs> But before before January March, there was Santa Claus. There was, and there was the Nutcracker Ballet, and Kitty. <sighs> I'll have to ponder this. I may have to drop out now because I have to go to work tomorrow. But it's lovely talking to y'all. Yeah. And thank you for joining us on this our podcast, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for yeah. having me as a guest. It has been lovely, and I hope that y'all have a good rest of your day. So what were some of the most surprising moments of this arc or of this story? It's a hard question. I'm trying to think of it. Toll I mean, like Verona? <laughs> <laughs> Toll yeah, about that. Verona? <laughs> Miss, I'm petite, not short. <laughs> I'm happy with my body. I'm confident. Oh. No one's going to keep me down. Toll. Just, just extendo Verona. <laughs> She's not like very tall she's like with height of the the others but she got taller that's she didn't weird, stop yeah that's fucked up that's crazy <laughs> that's that's that is unpredictable that was not foreshadowed in the slightest <laughs> it's described as her having a bit of brett's height right she she's a little bit like brett now and it's not a bad oh. thing crazy I don't know, that sounds like a bad thing it sounds like a bad thing. Like, is is she going to like bump her head on something? Is this like a it's a this height's got a bad vibe? Is all I'm saying. It's foreshadowing for for worse to come. I'm 
you know, I'm, I'm think it, it's rough for for Verona that um you know that this has happened to her, but I think she can get through this hard and trying time. We believe it. I think. I mean, honestly, like not that it's like surprising because it was like the culmination of her arc in a lot of ways, but like Lucy chilling the fuck out, like. <sighs> Yeah. In a lot of ways, that is surprising. In a lot of ways, it's not because, you know, it is, yeah, like it's the culmination of her arc. But, like, yeah, <laughs> like her being able to take that step back and delegate, like, most of the important shit out and being able to have her life for the first time in her entire life, essentially, is, yeah, it was mm. really wholesome. Really surprisingly it was beautiful. wholesome. Um, I mean, Girlhild is my favorite twist that I can remember from this book. It's just so <laughs> funny. And I don't know if anyone who's not following the story live will appreciate it as much because I feel like she's referenced like two or three times, <laughs> but it was something the community was really thinking about and talking about. Um, and I mean, luckily in the chapter before, it's like really, she's really mentioned. So you get to be like, oh yeah, that thing that we kind of maybe thought about before. Um, but just like, I think we all thought that pyre was gonna be about the fight against her and it's just like nah like, <laughs> so yeah. good yeah. so good red herring queen my goodness i like it because like also like like the new fate were like clearly you know had started to be set up near the end as kind of like that's going to be something that will have to be dealt with post story oh yeah that would also work really well in pyre like they would could be like a side like villain mm. to go hill that would be really cool and then it's like psych bitches <laughs> like <laughs> they are now the villain like i don't know i really like it, it, like, it, was, it was the most circuitous like wharf matrix right like like okay so so charles receives a goblin at his like second carmine contest that just says Gerhild sends her regards and then and then offs himself <laughs> just for the bit. Then Gerhild defeats a, a goblin even bigger than Charles. Oh, whoa, what does that even mean? A, a goblin that's bigger for goblins than Charles ever was for like the whole practice in this region. That's crazy. And you know who's bigger than Gerhild? <laughs> the new fae, Brisbane. Breezerbond's got her from this. It's Breezerbond with a steel chair in a second <laughs> book. <laughs> it's just. Exactly. Oh, wow. Oh, it's so good. Like, yeah. I, I love how they, like, undercut her, like, build up because that's so them to, like, undercut anything goblin going goblin y. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. But in a way that's so hype for the. Yeah. For the other verse. Exactly, like, yeah, like, they undercut her story, but, like, for the other verse, it's, like, oh, shit. And I love, like, in that chapter, how they're, like, describing everything that's happening, and then they're, like, on the other side of the clearing was Gerhild, and I'm, like, the fuck? Like, what the hell is she doing? Why is everyone so chill? And she's just there, and then you, you like, read a little more, and you're, like, oh, shit, okay. <laughs> she's okay, there to stay. <laughs> yeah, like, yeesh, okay. It, it, it really was such a like elegant build up of like we're, mm -hmm. we're going full avengers we're bringing in every all our best everyone that you mm -hmm. remember they're here they're trained they're ready they're at their like the top of their game higher than we've ever seen them to look at gerhild's <laughs> corpse <laughs> yeah it's like yeah because like when it mentions that she's on the other side of the thing it's like oh shit like is this going to be like a big meeting that they're going to like discuss the terms of war yeah, or whatever and then yeah. it's just like no no, they're just here to look at her body and, you know. But, like, not even, like, figure out who did this to her because they know that and they know why. Like, they already kind of know everything. Like, mm. Well, the, the thing is that yeah. they, they, they figure it out right away because this is the third time that they have been involved yeah. in a, like, a, a, a large red power um, <laughs> dying under mysterious circumstances or, like, uh, yeah. being otherwise disposed of. Um, the pattern's there, but I... What a... It's... It's so good. Um, I the second part of this question is of this story because we have the entirety of Pale to look back on. Yeah, Octotain. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think Summer broke me. <laughs> yeah, I think that like because I was like slightly behind, so I I didn't get like even being slightly behind, I was not expecting it to go how it was. I think Arc fourteen was happening when I was reading. Arc. And, like, even having that, it still was, like, what the fuck? But, like, I know for everyone live that it, like, broke them. People genuinely Breaks thought the story was ending on that note. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like, fucking hell. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a 
Great my moment. my nickname on the Parahumans Discord has been VV, like on a dividing line, uh, Team John, and then 07 <laughs> as like a salute. <laughs> because I, it, the the meme at the time had been Nick name yourself like Team like Breastbiter like uh like Team Nar uh, it's like Snyder like Team Re Reed which I know like um uh, uh, there was a pretty like fun faction for those now fanfics that spawned out of um but um like I was on Team John and I just put that 07 there and I've been saluting ever <laughs> since I can finally put my hand down because he's de yeah. he, he's he's been avenged but like. That, oh. that that summer break affected people. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was a whole a whole thing. Summer break that was so brutal and not horrible, but you know, like so brutal, like so hard crushing, and just like so amazingly written and wonderful. And it hurt a lot. All good wild boy stories hurt a lot, which is to say, all wild boy stories hurt a lot. <laughs> the the ones that I'm thinking of is Bristow and Alexander. Um, I. Just Bristow being like, nah, fuck you, I'll deal, like, I'll, I take the brownies is insane. <laughs> Why would it's you do still that? crazy, yeah. Like, please get over yourself just a little bit. What are you doing? <laughs> and just, and the fact that Alexander died, it was like, I was so hyped for this man mm -hmm. to be a part of our lives for the foreseeable future. And it's just like, nope. Yeah, um, it's, so, it's so brutally sudden as well. It's just mm -hmm. like, he's there. He's talking, and then his brains are splattered onto the like yeah. driveway. It's like John oh, has this dang. this line. I think it's in Summer Break, um, where he says to Moser, "You know, I I weakened Alexander greatly. I, I you <laughs> shot him in the back of the head. Yes, it weakened him very much. He died soon afterward." <laughs> oh my god! Because like That's... John like shot him in the head, so he took some of his like mind uh, as trophy. And that would mean that, like, he's a better like with practitioner word choice. So he's like almost like flouting the trophy by being that witty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. But yeah, he was—he's a very bad person, but also had a lot of good qualities in a way yeah. that, like, I miss Alexander. Um, but mm. I don't—I don't know how he would have affected the story exactly if he had continued to, to be in it. Um, it would have been very different, but yeah, I just didn't expect for him to be eliminated. I think in that same interlude, it's it's alluded to that the blue heron that they they killed and quartered was Twitter. Um, oh and my god! I never gotta say, uh, like like that was like it was a technomatic god that it was like yeah, reached out of the machine. I can say that. And and uh, I'm I'm glad that for for what time Alexander was with us, he was able to spare us such a, a terrible fate. Um, <laughs> the, you know, they say what you will about the man, like as you said, good qualities, bad qualities, but um, he, he did spare us that. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, when I'm I'm all the way back around, I stand. Team Alexander 07. Team Alexander. Um, it's a problematic fave. <laughs> problematic fave. Problematic fave. On, on the one hand, on the one hand, messy man for swearing his students. Like, like worst possible crime someone can commit, absolutely ruining the lives of the people that were in his care. On the other hand, he's kind of hot. And he's also, he also did like, get rid of Twitter for us before that ever became a problem. So, yeah, you know, maybe he's, for, the, the impact maybe of him. Balance out, yeah. <laughs> I'm fully yeah. on board. I don't think there's anything to balance out, really. I think one just outweighs <laughs> the other so heavily that I'm. Um, I for for me, I think the most surprising moment was at the very end of Hundred Years Loss when Miss is visited by the Page of Sons mm. because that's the last extra material in Pale. Um, and it's like the only one that leads right into like like straight up chapter work like that's basically an interlude um and um the the fact like mrs is, is a really enigmatic character that i th like like um I, I really adore with like the fact that she like holds the space of this maternal benevolence like of like trying to help everyone to be better and like seeing the best in them and enabling that without ever being able to just say that that's what she wants because mm. like that's by her nature she can't like grab and hold and she can't directly state and she can't like feel her own feelings directly but she's constantly holding the space of it the print of it 
it's implied by by the the way that she stands um and there's there's something very correct about the page of sons coming to mark the moment before she is even aware that she has resolved to do it mm. um because that's 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 her and a character um but like in a in a more traditional story i feel like the point of reading hundreds of years lost would be being able to say that avery is the next hazel or something similar mm-hmm. of like like the, the only reason that i as an author i'm giving you this information is because it's going to be directly relevant to how our protagonist is so cool mm-hmm. and instead it's this tragedy that doesn't get like a happy ending but like catalyzes our understanding of how big what is happening to one of our side characters is um and like the the what and hey if you're still listening the the uh all packed up live stream uh 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 on the pale uh pale two uh is uh going to be including a running of the path um to as wild bow gms people for trying to solve hundred years lost and getting more clues because we still don't understand what's going on there um, and if Elliot I've definitely is wrong, su- Elliot Brilk. <laughs> Elliot Brilk. <laughs> Elliot Brilk. Um, and uh, I'm really excited for that because I had the horrible surprise of never finding the answer until now. <laughs> I still don't know. Uh, so that's that's the most surprising part, part of Pale for me. Um, Hundred Years <laughs> Lost and its implications, and it, mo- more most specifically the Page of Suns visiting Miss. That was a really that was a really good moment. I do have to say, yeah, Miss is definitely one of my favorite characters like mm-hmm. especially that was like very well crystallized for me in like in the final arc where the orum like mm. slices up her leg and i was like mm-hmm. you can touch you can fucking fuck up anyone else like the fact that you did this to miss is like next level like mm-hmm. completely fucked up like she just feels so fragile and like oh she's so good who am i kidding i want miss to be my patron like, I was kind of thinking the same. Like it's actually we, we, we all me. gave the wrong answer. It's we live <laughs> in Kevin <laughs> Kevin found and we learn from this and that's it. It does sound like a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Is that shall we outro? Yeah. I think so. Um so thanks for having me on your podcast, y'all. This was oh, fun. Wow. Okay. You are so Do you have welcome. anything you want to plug? <laughs> um yeah. Um my podcast with Jenny, Pale in Comparison, um, is nearing its end. Um, I've read, we finished Pact and we're going to read, um, Poke and then we're going to talk about my predictions and where I went wrong. <laughs> so it's going to be really fun. Um, Woo. yeah. Um, and you should, again, uh, tune into All Packed Up 2, um, cause I think we'll have a little section where we talk about Pact. Um, I, th- I think the plan is to like only talk about pack during designated pack spoiler times um but that'll be fun um and also give lots of money to um this charity in part so that Ruben and Elliot will do wild things and so that we get pace season 2 um Ooh. Ooh. yeah exciting <laughs> more pace so bad <laughs> so it's, uh, oh my goodness i'm i i i am uh, I obviously I I was like wasn't on the channel at the time of uh the Pace's uh production, so I wasn't involved at all because that's definitely the reason that that would have happened mm-hmm. in this extended universe and uh, <laughs> graphically more unwieldy narrative. Um, <laughs> but I'm really excited for uh, season two. Um, so I I, I will, will hope that the fundraising passes a goal. Yeah, I, I, I do believe. Yeah, I, I am pretty sure that Pace too is on is somewhere on donation goal woot woot so help make it possible people yeah as well as yeah. other ridiculous things and you know just it's for charity. charity it's a good so. thing to be doing you might get to see elegant drink eat <laughs> absorb brilk <laughs> and that should be your first priority <laughs> I should, it should be everyone's first priority at all make elliot and reuben suffer <laughs> yay yay <laughs> they're freely offering to do- <laughs> <laughs> these people that we've never met wink yeah. wink <laughs> <laughs> okay um and yeah i guess chuck us a review on apple podcasts or stitcher or whatever i mean it's it's maybe a little late if you haven't done it already but on the other hand it's the final episode be do be nice give us a review Woo-hoo. 
um, you could check us out on uh, Blue Heron. Um, <laughs> and if you would like to see stuff by myself, um, you could check out the Blue Heron Tea Nook, um, which is uh, a little forum Segway. where uh, a bunch of the uh, uh, writers that write like essays or like analysis and specifically um, fan fiction to do with packed and pale characters directly um, are compiling all their work. So you can go to AO3, of course, and like there's there's a lot of lovely stuff on Occult Magic Online. Um, if you're more of like an RP uh, mentality, you want to see some elsewhere material. Um, but uh, honestly, if I if anything ever happens with that Lucy essay, th- there'll probably be a write up on Blue Heron T Nook. Um, so. Also, I put a fanfic up there today, but I feel like that might be something odd to plug directly. Um, <laughs> fanatical zeal uh, or Sanjate solves the play- placement test, if you're so intrigued. Um, mm-hmm. um, that sounds awesome. That sounds great. I, I, I mean, I, I can read the blurb if y'all want. <laughs> I yeah, read it. Blurb. I Do it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, I just didn't put it in the show notes, so I didn't know if that was okay. Um, Hang on, I'm gonna have to go on a whole search to find my own work. <laughs> okay, until you do that, uh, with our Blue Heron, remember we post memes every day, and if mm-hmm. there's ever a day without every a day. meme, every call us Forsworn. <laughs> uh, the the, the timeline will then forgive us, and then we'll do it again tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay, we have a oh. website at doofmedia.com, and especially check out doofmedia.com slash APU2 with a numeral. To. Um, that's where you can find out when exactly the live stream will be in your time. And to help um, make Doof Media grow and do wild things like APU2, please consider donating to our Patreon at patreon.com slash doofmedia. And while you're there, uh, also go to patreon.com slash wildbow and help fund his awesome Caribbean vacation that he deserves and I don't know if he's taking but maybe he should <laughs> maybe he should yeah maybe he should he should Give, yeah. let that man rest please he's done so much good um, well maybe like maybe the Caribbean but maybe you know some other place I, just, I mean just... it's probably just somewhere else in Canada Kenneth. <laughs> let him let him go to Kenneth Found let him go to Kenneth just... Found and... <laughs> mm. um, as I put in my uh, live read the other day uh I myself personally, as well as I'm sure lots of people listening, have got hundreds, if not thousands, of hours of enjoyment out of Wildbo's writing, including all of the talking about and listening to podcasts, etc. So you know, throw him mm. some dollars, please, mm-hmm. please, especially in this um, holiday period, so that mm-hmm. he can um, <laughs> really relax. Um, yeah. Um, who wants to read the um, pickup line? I- I'll. I found the blurb um, because it wasn't in the Google Doc because I posted it right on Tao3. But um, I'll, I'll read that and then who wants to do the pickup line? I'll do a pickup line. That's fine. <laughs> Hilarious. I'm excited. Okay. Um, fanatical zeal or Sanjate solves the placement test uh, follows Velvet, who awakens to discover that she didn't exist moments ago. Uh, her practitioner, Easton Sanjate, has fallen victim to the placement test, a ritual carnate, incarnate of an unknown force that transforms people into places and their possessions into people. Velvet is Easton's implement, the gauntlet with which he conjures elements and rules his summons. Left stranded on the cusp of the ritual's game, Velvet and her motley crew decide to play. Easton's friend, Miles, keeps giving her weird looks, though. Wonder what that's about. It's set around the sword moot after Easton and Miles stay and can it found, but before the end of Pale. Oh, that's that fun. fun. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm working really hard on it. And I, 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 most of my shit is on OMO, and it's like three years of um, elsewhere random RP and snippets that no one could conceivably, like, it's, it's all, oh, you had to be there stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, this is, this is properly, like, for the audience of people that have read Pale, um, rather than just the people that are super fans and want to, um, like, go, oh, I wonder what it would be like if my town was magical. Hmm. I guess, actually, speaking of RP stuff, if you wanted to check out Pace Season 1, it's a lot of fun. Um, mm. I still remember. Give it a listen. Now is absolutely the time, so you can prep for Season 2. Exactly, which is probably just not going to be related to Season 1 in any way, shape, or form, but, you know. Where? <laughs> <laughs> I'll get over it. It's fun. <laughs> You'll get over it. It's fun. Okay, so our, our weekly uh, pickup line here, uh, courtesy of Jenny, who is gone, but she wrote it, so... Hey, were you almost horrified? Because I can see infinity in your eyes. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jenny. And we didn't warn anyone before, 
but we're going back to Pact and Woo. Pact Dice. Yay! 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 So if you haven't read Pact slash don't want to uh, know things about Pact Dice documents, leave now. Ciao. Great, no, no, you left. Now. Now. <laughs> no, 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 now? Okay, no, you really thank have you. To go. Bye. <laughs> okay, I think they're... Leave! <laughs> okay, now they're gone. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. So do we want to just talk about the mags in the room, or... Shall we discuss the mags in the room? Because... <laughs> Oh my god, like... I really wanted her to just, like, pop out behind some random thing in Alcazar and say, like, some cryptic shit about, oh, it's time for the third thing, and everyone to be yeah. like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, in, like, uh, like, the fifth one where they were like, we're sending someone to Toronto to check out the thing, and I was like, oh. Yeah. Oh, I just... It's so crazy to me that, like, the idea has kind of always been, since we've, like, heard of Pyre existing, being like, Pyre, Mags, Gerhild, done. Like, that's it. Third Blood, mm-hmm. Fire, and Darkness. And now it's like, it still fucking works because you goddamn well know that, like, uh, Pedrig is, like, mm-hmm. 100% there with the new fate. Like, bullshit, yep. That's entirely his shit. But, like, oh, I don't know. Like, it's I, just I so really wild. I really think it's going to still be a Mags story in, in I, like, a, a big way. But, like, it's yeah, not going to be about so. girls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just like mags feels like the still does feel like like almost the perfect protagonist even now that it's not about go hill but like yeah that's i don't know it's still crazy to me because like ever since yeah ever since we heard about pyre it's like oh okay that'll be mags's third and it'll be go hill like that's exactly what it's going to be like that's what we've always you know quote unquote known it's going to be as soon as we heard about it and like suddenly it's like no you're wrong figure it out now bitches having enough like self-control to for your audience to go oh right girlhood's book and you just go sure <laughs> yeah. kids yeah. sure yeah you believe that i i, I said nothing i i yeah. uh, let me let me just keep my, on building my, up the idea that it's going to be girlhood's book in the background go on to do all read this into my silence shit. dig dig yeah. your hole deeper i I'll, i've brought you a shovel <laughs> <laughs> so fucking good like yeah it's, yeah i because like i have to think that like a new mags would be like pretty well aligned with like the new goblin because mm. they represent a lot of like the best things out of goblins and mags is mm. mags has, obviously has a rocky relationship with goblins but she does work with them she doesn't just like purely enslave them or like so i do think like a, an older version of mags could definitely be more yeah like new goblin like working with yeah. toads well, to be, to be precise, bold specific prediction: when um, the pyre starts up uh, and we um, are in Toad Swallow's perspective, as he swears to familiarship with uh, Mags, that's <laughs> okay, that's going to be the launch point. <laughs> I fuck with that. Yeah, that could be cool. Especially having like had to cope with um, fairy and glamour, then adding gunk to her arsenal is mm. like that's that is a dangerous Mags right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, she's back. She keeps going in circles. Um, I so I haven't read Mile End. I don't know if we want to talk about Mile End, but isn't Montreal supposed to be like really scary? Slash, I could have mentioned like I I know some things. Cleo's from there, right? Cleo's, Cleo's from, from there. Montreal. Um, the, is Lucy the character... fucked? Like, <laughs> no, she's not I... fucked. There's a primeval beast that eats demons for breakfast. That's one of the lords. That sounds convenient. Um. <laughs> and that just uh i i think its name is sinful creature or like the the sinful one um and it's I, I, so that's one of the people in charge um and then there's a um person with uh alabaster that like skinned an alabaster that's like one of the teachers of like the headmistress of the school that's there um where um rose went when she was a kid um mm. uh, rose senior um and um there's uh, the spirit of Montreal itself, Montreal, um, the, 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 the Montreal, um, or Le Montreal, uh, anyway, um, any, the, she, if, I think she ends up learning city magic, um, from the spirit of the city itself, um, and becomes unstoppable because it's Lucy. I bet she's fine. She's learning French. I'm sure she'll do fine. I, yeah, I mean, I believe in Lucy. I don't know. She's basically a war sorceress, similar to Anthem. Hmm. Mm. Like, 
with ready to see her and Pyre introduce herself as like um witch knight of Kenneth. Um, th- third witch knight of Kenneth, um, septuple yeah. sorcerer, uh, tri- septfold uh, duelist. <laughs> duelist, and yeah. it's just like I've learned from everybody now. <laughs> there's there's a point where you give up saying uh, the amount of folds there are, and you just say war sorceress, like mm-hmm. origami yeah. duelist. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. I, I mean, I think I think she'll know. Like I read, I read most of my old. I think she'll like. She's kind of she's on the higher end of the power scale now. Much like Verona is above politics, Lucy's not quite yeah. above them. She doesn't travel as much, but she seems basic. It's it's I think it's less of like Verona's aloofness and more of like Mercer's clout of like mm. oh Lucy Ellingson is in town. Um, <laughs> Uh, do, do we have any young bachelors like, yeah. right now? Uh, is is your is your are your kids free? Yeah. <laughs> uh, either either this is an arranged marriage, or you make the best friend. Yeah, exactly. I think yeah, with um yeah with Lucy like that, it's it is very much just like everyone putting their uh, their best foot, forward. which is what yeah. she deserves. She does. Yeah. Yes. Um. Is there any more packed but, specifics? I was gonna say, please explain to me what Nora's practice is. <laughs> Oh sure. Um, so, uh, for anyone that is only just now getting pack dice materials opened, there is a big pack dice document right now. It's like 120 pages, I want to say, where Wildbow has just written all of his write ups on like fields generally. Like that's the bulk of the document of like, yes, you can be a shaman, uh, but that like that that can specify down from generally working with spirits to like being a totemist and building totems for spirits, being like a spirit breather, that kind of thing. So, like, there's a bunch of these little graphs that go, for for example, the paths field um, goes into all the different varieties of finder that there are, um, and, like, the nuances between finder and path runner. And um, Nora, uh, Nora's is um, grounded, uh, which is basically bringing Earth to the paths instead of bringing the paths to Earth or to yourself. Um, so it's a lot of counter spells. It's that down-to-Earth rune that Avery uses to turn her... Um, her boons off um mm. it's like basically like instead of going big and impressive and conjuring something amazing it's getting everyone else to chill out so like walking through a firefight without the fire touching you or any of the bullets hit you um it's like going onto a path and just saying i don't want to deal with that right now like i i, I don't I, there's no obstacle here um it's that sort of thing counter spell specialist and yeah, the thing that we see her do was pretty cool. Just like stamp her foot and like twenty foot radius circle is like none of this is changing, which is very Mm-mm. that was awesome. Very cool. Imagine getting all the options of practices before you and saying, "I'm going to be a normie. I'm going to norm. <laughs> I'm going to normalize things. I'm going to make things like just chill out." <gasps> oh, exactly what Avery never... needs. Yeah, it is, but I could never do this. <laughs> no, it's too much. Um, cool. The um there there are fields and practices that are on the pack dice document that aren't even like remotely touched on. Um and they they were like most thorough around the time that the Aurum um started just giving out whole practices. Um <laughs> so it was like, you're a brainstormer, you turn emotions into elements. Uh you're a say a sealer specialist, you work really well with stopping things from happening. It's 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 I, I really think that Wildbo just grabbed a random number generator and went, this person is now <laughs> option four. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's awesome. It has an explanation of scrivening others, like the Mimisthai, like January, March in it. Um, mm-hmm. And I-, I got the impression as we were reading that um, that he-, he hadn't quite decided uh, for some points in the story, like he was still thinking about it. Because the, the phrase scrivening other is not used until after scriveners are introduced. So I'm mm. like, it was clearly a space that was still being worked on, or at least I, I got that impression. And it's really nice to have it all laid out um, because there was a period where people were making memes of like, like, ah, oh, yes, a fancy is the old version of a bug. And it's like acoustic thing. And bugs are like the new variety. And then he introduces a technomancy fancy, which is completely oxymoronic with what we understood thus far the type tech kitty just caused hours of discourse um and like this like for that live experience that was something that 
brought me a lot of peace. Um, like that, the epilogues, sure, fine. The pack drives document, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Okay. Yeah. On that note, I probably should go to bed. But this was really fun, y'all. Thank you. Yes. Well, thank you for having us. I mean, you were yeah. very <laughs> welcome. You were a great guest. A great guest, truly. Right. Um, <laughs> as usual, we don't actually have a way to end this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Excellent story, everybody. I hope you enjoyed <laughs> Pale. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Wildbo. Thanks, Thank Bar. you, Wildbo. Huzzah. Huzzah. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>